Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Hooked on You, a Dead by Daylight dating sim. Which is a horror dating sim based off of Dead by Daylight. And I mean, it's an official dating sim, it's not like a fan game or anything. And in this dating sim, we date a series of killers, monsters, and ghosts. And hopefully you don't die along the way. Cough, cough, cough. You wake up on the beach soaking wet. Salwar steam is inside of your throat. As if you nearly drown. I think I did. Water falls from your mouth as you open it to gasp for air. You have no memory of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your own name. But not where you came from. Or a single fact about your life. What you do know is that despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, you feel incredibly sick to your stomach. Cough. Wow. Really went down the wrong pipe, huh? Eat a bit, or can I go on? Nah, it's cool, narrator. Because I can give you a minute, we've got plenty of time. Endless time, really. Ocean, why are you talking to me? In eternity, we catch my drift. Whoa, not now, Ocean. Sorry, Manly. May I continue? Please, go on. Okay, then. As I was... Cough. As I was saying... You look down your feet, angled deep in the crystal blue water of a newly arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque discovery. Eh. Ah. A decomposing face trace up to you from beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit, a stream of dark bile, bugs, worms, and overick. Questions race for your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero. However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. What will you do? Close your eyes. You close your eyes. This must be a nightmare, right? This is not happening. This is not happening. The Bantra centers you, and you're briefly able to find peace. The lapping waves go silent, and for the first time in your entire life, it feels like you're in control. When you open your eyes. Hey, Bunny. You're in the exact same place. Except now that disgusting corpse face is smiling at you. Even the dead have a wondrous time on our island. I promise you will, too. Blub. Don't worry. You're gonna do just fine. You wouldn't want anyone else. That was sure weird. That voice again. Do oceans normally talk? Your memory isn't right. But you're pretty sure you remember learning as a child that oceans do not speak directly to people in spooky terms. No, they do. Your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer in your current situation, as you feel something soft bump into your foot. Ball? You look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand there next to you. You stare down, frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. Little help, please. You turn around. When you see what's waiting for you, your jaw just about hits the ground. Big. Eh. Nice. Big. Four gorgeous monsters. Well, the one on the left is already like. Getting ready to hug me. Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well-tended volleyball court. Each of them oozes with undead energy. A magical aura reaching out and penetrating you. Via your eyes. They have to make sure to clarify. Penetrating you with your eyes. Your heart begins to race. Curiosity, fear, desire. You can't help but stare at these casually dressed... Let's call them killers. I don't know. Not to be judgmental, but that's just the energy they put out there. So many competing feelings rush through your mind at once that you're completely paralyzed. Hello. There are weird days and then there's this. All I can do is look down at the ball and back up the monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Nice. Sexy ass monsters though. What do you do? Toss it back, kick it back, say no thanks. Say nothing, do nothing. Give them the old squall treatment. You stand unfrozen in complete silence. 
It's, can I be honest with you? It's kind of a weird move. It's as if you truly don't care that someone asked you politely. You're doing you, despite how much a weirdo or just a jerk it might make you look like. Clearly you don't even care. It's because I'm the real monster around here. Is it some kind of display of confidence, confusion, sheer awkwardness? You feel judged, but you're not sure how. Spirit cuts the sounds of a giggle that she quickly swallows when she sees that it caught your attention. Hunter's jogs over to collect the ball from the ground next to you before heading back to the volleyball court of everyone else. Except for Spirit. She's really staring you down. Her expression hardening as you watch her. The longer you hold her gaze, the more angry she seems to become before turning with a huff and filling off to join the others. Sundre? Alone again, you look across the beach at these strange residents who casually bat a volleyball back and forth, happily ignoring your intrusion onto their private beach. Should you be frightened? Worried? Excited? I did prefer them as killers, not to give too much away. But at the same time, damn, are they looking very appealing in their own way, and nobody so much as lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Don't be scared, Manly. You are made for this. Well, jeez, if the spooky ocean voice says not to be scared, I'm sure it's all going to work out. With no good reason not to, you decide to head over and see what happens next. It seems like we've derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. Uh, I think they just kind of said the, the thing you were going to say, literally. You derailed the game just by showing up, nitwit. And I guess you're also a nitwit. Look, it's special something to go with what the trapper says when he says it. That's a policy I hold for pretty much anyone who always seems to have fresh blood on their hands. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a silly game. What's your deal? What brings you here? You mean they're here to do more than distract from my total domination? <sighs> that was Rafe. That sign means he was done with the game too. Either that, or he saw a butterfly or something. Look, I don't care what a slack-jawed moron is here. I just want to know, can I kill them or not? Only after the fifth date. But you're probably gonna fail at that. Just mentioning that. You know you can't. At least not yet. Oh yeah, not yet. Hey Manly, you might want to, you know, say something. Actually, never mind. There'll be plenty of time for that soon enough. Right now this group has some questions for you. But be warned, answer quickly and answer well. Save game! This is a time quiz, and it'll be very important later. So I'll tell you right now, route-wise, we're probably going to go down Spirit first. So you're going to probably see me choose answers that I think are going to work with Spirit. And then I'd probably do Huntress next. Both of them are appealing to me in different ways. And then... I would say um, Trapper, then Rafe last, because Rafe is like the least appealing to me. But I also kind of need to see how the format of the game works, as if all, like, all the routes are like interlinked or if they're like very separated off we'll see very important or not important anyway whatsoever probably that one can't remember how attractive would you say you are is this actually timed maybe not who knows average i'm pretty average i think just never a face in the crowd i never normal Meaningless life in an endless cycle. I think you're quite cute myself. Like a chipmunk. Or a grizzly bear. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Money. That'd basically be Batman, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's like less Luke's or like money, stuff like that. But think about it. Some of the best characters are characters that just have the power of money. Like, you ever seen the... If anyone out there ever watched Venture Brothers? Like, I think it was St. Cloud? You know, like... Hey, everyone. This is Manly Betas Hero. And I'm here playing the game. With my large amounts of money. Flight, invisibility, super strength. Now, to give a serious answer to this one, while there is tactical options to invisibility, 
Um, there's a good chance we may make invisibility tech anyways. So that's a moot point. Um, and invisibility does not save you from, say, a area of destruction attack. This is why the Assassin's class is one of the weakest ones if it's stay night. So flight for super strength. Although flight is actually kind of bad if you, you're a normal person with no other abilities. Because like if you fly high enough, you're just going to die. So traditionally, I think I would go with super strength. Because you, if super strength would apply, you might be able to jump really high anyways. Like I said, like flight has its own huge uses. Like saving on airline tickets. Um, just go with flight for right now. Flight for sure. Technically, I suppose I can fly. Honestly, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. As far as I go, I'm still not where I want to be. What was your best subject in school? Actually, this one, specifically. <laughs> History? Nice. It's important to know what came before, so we're not to repeat humanity's mistakes. I mean, we will anyways, but still. But yeah, I'd say history. I was kind of just good at everything. What's your favorite animal? Huh. I don't like favorite animal questions. Because I think all animals, like the majority of them, are usually pretty good. Just typically depends what you want to like raise and like your space and everything. And the amount of money, of course. Hence why the money power is very strong. Uh, spirit probably like cats. Definitely a cat. Yes. What? Why is everyone looking at me? You think just because I'm a typical cute goth girl, I have some specific love of all things cats. And more specifically, black cats. Well, I do, but you can all go to hell anyway. What's your favorite color? Red. Or black. Or purple. Or red. Red. Some call him the cover love. But love is just never word for pain. What's your dream job? Astronaut? Nightclub promoter? Eh. Not working? Neat life. If we get to do what we really want, why work at all? It takes a lot of courage to break free from society's expectations to climb the ladder. Only she could spin laziness as some kind of grand crusade. These damn millennials. Best flavor of ice cream. Ooh. That's a unique one. Uh, they don't have my flavor here. I'd say strawberry. Without going... If you stick with the basic flavors, like the main ones, like... Vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, stuff like that, then yeah, I'd probably go for like strawberry. If you go into like the more nuanced flavors and like there's some other things I like. I'm gonna go with vanilla. Just because vanilla is a little more neutral, it can be used with like some other dishes that are just eating ice cream straight up. Well, chocolate ice cream can overpower certain things. Vanilla? My favorite is pain. Same. Same here. Mine is vanilla. Swelled of pain. I think mint chip is the greatest flavor I ever conceived myself. Oh, I like mint chip a lot, actually. Mint chip is pretty good. And pistachio. Um, and green tea. Green tea flavor. But enough about ice cream. Am I right? Oh, and taro. Actually, taro would be probably my biggest favorite flavor. Hold on a second, this reminds me. I'm right. Always. It's a lesson you should learn before we go too much further. Do what I say if you want to survive. Pink mint chip. We're teaching lessons now, Narina. You rascal. Kill or be killed is the rule on this island. Even for faceless voices. Tell me, what's the best flavor of ice cream? Mint chip. Best flavor is mint chip. So unbeatant. I think you're gonna do just fine. 
Anyhow, now that they know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants you to start getting to know them. Horse flesh. The best flavor is horse flesh. You got a reading comprehension problem? I just told you midship is where it's at. You almost bought yourself a game over there, buddy. That's right, I get in your life whenever I want to. I'm in control, so don't you forget it. If I say you like mint champ, you like mint champ. Now try it again. Tell me what's the best flavor of ice cream. Horse flesh. Who do you think you are? Let me tell you who. Now I'm the one in control of you live or die. You have to understand. It was very good to end someone else's game. You should try it sometime. I'm Trapper. I pretty much run things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person in this whole island. Oh, so you do have the money power. I don't like losers. If you want to know what loser is, say hello to Rafe. Hi, I'm Rafe. I'm nothing like everyone else. I like nice people, and I love big dumb idiots. Hey, what's up? I'm Spirit. I don't like... most things. I don't really hate most things either. It's not worth my time. But the things I do hate, I really hate. You know? Based on my personal observations, life is nothing but suffering. And society is a carefully calculated lie to keep everyone subservient to those in power. It's better to choose to just not take part. Jeez, it's like she was downright murdered by society. She hates it so much. Oh no, wait, I'm remembering Spirit's story now. And that's almost exactly what happened. Hey, I'm Huntress. Don't let these bummers get you down. There's lots of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. Yeah, there is, if you know what I mean. Grow up. Grow a body. I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead, but I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not made of it. Whatever, fog body. That's not nice. He's not nice. You love it. Only sometimes. Ew. Really. That's disgusting. That's why she likes it. Don't speak for me. I also hate it. Stop speaking entirely, actually. For the first time ever, I agree with Rafe. Let's move on. Otherwise, I'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, they'll want to show off soon enough. If we're done playing, let's do something else instead. Wow. For once, I actually agree with the meathead. I say we go back to my yacht. It's a massive boat docked nearby. I'll give everyone a taste of true luxury and power. Rafe rolls his eyes. Don't mind him. He just hates fun and happiness. No. I hate the endless, desperate, soul-crushing pursuit of wealth. The way it's flaunted needlessly and the cruelty it engenders. What about hanging out by the pool? I find the water calming, simple, beautiful. Hey, what about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have some fun as a group. Are you all serious? There's a perfectly good lounge to chill out at right here. You know with the big hat and everything, you look kind of like, uh... The po 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 ghost? Hachishaku-sama, something like that? I'm tired, and besides, I hate being in the sun. Where do you want to go? What's this place? Be great to relax for a second at the lounge. To kick up your feet, look out over the ocean, and relax in your own terms. Who'd want anything else? Dry, comfortable, Enjoying a cool drink on a hot day. It's the best. I mean, what kind of fool, what kind of monster, what kind of mask-wearing psychopath 
and finally be granted a break from the constant grind of chasing a fight to get ahead, and then choose to exert themselves in, quite frankly, any way whatsoever. Why am I the only one who gets it? It's time to stop living by the rules. I won't do it any longer. Yeah, we should probably give her a second to calm down. Hold on. But just one moment. This is Dwight and Claudette. Our activities can work near us. They're also the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janitors, and we have a job. That's the wagey life. They're the only help remaining on the island. Everyone else dead? This place we call Murderer's Island. Cute dramatic musical flourish. Yay. None of the others survived. Well, <laughs> survived by the interview process, I mean. That's why we shall therefore refer them as survivors with a capital S. These two have worked here a long time. So very long. I don't actually know how long it's been. Sorry, anyway, I should probably let Dwight and Claudette do their mandated jobs. They should look happy, but they're vibrating with a nervous energy that is starting to give me the creeps. We'll now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. However, in the future, we recommend winning for us to present you with your options whenever possible, and don't just run off to various activities unsupervised. We don't have much autonomy around here. The least you can do is allow us to do our job. The most you can do to help us get off is that. Dwight. Yeah, yes, yes, pardon me. Please follow us. Hey, narrator. Yes, something can help me with? Those two, uh, Claudette and Dwight. Did they just start to mention something about wanting to escape? Is escape an option? Should I be trying to escape? Escape them? Oh, no, 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 no. I think you're mistaken. They're not main characters, see. It seemed like Dwight was asking for help to get off this island, though. Oh, right, that. Yeah, yes, that's true. He was. But he just meant that he wants to get to the other island, vacation island gateways. A couple miles south of here. He has much fancier accommodations than this island. It's one of those big corporate outfits, quite exclusive, where all the famous celebrities hang out. Very luxurious. Doesn't quite have the charm that this island has, though. Trust me, you wouldn't want to go there. If all that money comes to a lot of restrictions. This is where you belong. Now, now, off you go. It's time for an activity. On this island, your decisions matter, mostly. When I agree with them, I like that other island. That's so what it'll be. So let's go to the one we chose originally. Finally, freedom from the preposterous premise that the four of us would be engaged in some sort of thrilling two-on-two -two volleyball match. Spread looks at you from beneath her gigantic sun hat. She takes a conspiratorial tone. I don't know whose idea of volleyball was in the first place, but I hate them. I tried to feign a sprained ankle, but everyone already knows that I technically float above the ground, so nobody believed I was even putting on any pressure on my joints in the first place. Then I tried to annoy everyone by not giving a crap. When that didn't work, I tried whining. And when that didn't work, I afraid to kill every single person on this island, but it turns out I'm not the first to toss those kind of threats around on this island. So, thanks, I guess, for getting called off. That's a big knife you have there. Are we fretting the NHF again? Haha. <laughs> now it's Dwight who takes on the conspiratorial tone, his eyes shifting as he slips into a loud whisper. Please, just make it quick. Is what you'll be saying when we get behind the bar to make you the drink of your dreams. Ah. Ah ha 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 Hilarious, right? Right, right, Dwight? Yeah, right, Dwight. Yeah, right, 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 right. So, so what do you be having? Personal choice, I like vodka. I didn't come to the party. I'm just trying to make the best of a very strange situation, I don't know. How about a daiquiri? Probably helps not to be drunk around, you know, a bunch of monsters, too. I know how to make that. But skip the liquor. I'll have mine virgin. Travis Snickers at your choice of words. Sure you will, kid. Don't mind him. We don't need to soak ourselves in booze just to please someone else's expectations. If you ask me, there's enough spirits here already. Ah! Besides, alcohol just numbs you to the painful reality of the world. I choose to face them head on. You never do something like, I don't know, hide it from it all beyond the world's largest hat or anything. 
Please allow me to ignore any fashion advice. From the man wearing a doll's face as a mask. Not a doll's face jerk. Since we've fulfilled your request, it's time for you to return the favor. I should have known there was a catch. Icebreaker time! I swear, and I'd known they pulled this kind of faux enthusiastic community building crap. I'd have suggested we attempt to walk to the lowest point in the ocean before I ever set foot near this bar. You don't think it could be kind of fun? A little fun. Never mind. I hate it. This sucks. But it could be fine. Or whatever you say. Has anyone seen my hat? Hat? I've literally never seen him in a hat. Let's go play TF2. You'll find plenty of hats there. If we must make small talk, I'm at least picking a topic before we end up being forced to do some lame improv game that nerds learn at their non-sports after school activities that I definitely never did because I'm no nerd. He thinks a certain someone doth protest too much. Sitting here on this beautiful sunny afternoon, warm sand beneath the cool fog beneath my severed feet. The topic I choose is books. Novels, comics, fiction, or non. Reading is the only real escape from the inescapable horror of life. The escape into your own mind. A groan rolls through the crowd. Not a lot of readers here, I imagine. Based on that response. They were much more enthusiastic about drinking. Considering the situation we're in, it seems an appropriate time to ask you. Manly, what's your desert island book? The one book you'd bring with you if you were, well... On an island like this. Oh, and it has to be a classic horror. For reasons that should be obvious. Dracula? She means because this is the island of horror villains. And also those books are all in the public domain. Nothing too modern. Humanity has really gone soft these past hundred of years. So, what's your favorite? Yeah, here it is. Dracula's one classic that's still scary. Be seduced by some beautiful stranger. Only to learn later on that they're an immortal villain. It's downright... Thrilling. Well, I guess, but I was gonna say... That despite the deviant behavior of Dracula, and the threat of possible danger or even death that he poses, you can't help but be get turned on by the liberation from the status quo that he represents. Sure? Yeah, I guess. Same here. So what if some old doctor says he's a bad boy? You're supposed to reek like garlic and sleep alone. Who did they think would buy into that? If you're going to be trapped in the nightmare that is undead life eternal, which I know a little something about, you can do a lot worse than great clothes, a castle, and a lover doesn't take shit from anyone. The scariest part of Dracula is thinking that no one will ever be quite as interesting to make love to as a vampire. Enough about these old stories that belong to someone else. I think it's time to make up some new stories of our own. Before you know what's going on, Huntress is waving an empty vodka ball in the air. A devilish twinkle in her half-mask-covered eye. Might I suggest something a little naughty? Let's all get in a circle and spin this bad boy. Oh, hello there. It's, uh... Pop Star Joker. Like, literally, that's, that's how I see that character as. The, uh, the in-game one, yeah. Great idea. Trickster. Is it a bit late to introduce a new character? I thought I was the one who gets to make the rules, so... I'm not sure who I'm asking. But I wasn't ready for this. I guess you never saw it coming. Well, hello. And who is this new fan in the waiting? Beat it, hack. I don't know. What's the harm in inviting one more person to join the circle for our game? Oh, I can't stay. I was just saying it's a great idea. Also teasing the secret trickster ending. I've got much, much better things to do than hang out here. I'm famous. Toodle new. The rules are simple. First you spin, then you swap. Spit, that is. But let's be clear, this ain't a peep show. We're here to have a good time, but in a classy way. All makeouts will happen out of view of the public eye. A uh, real romantic like. Yes, romance is the goal. So we'll all be waiting here in complete silence, trying to listen in and use our imaginations while you make out on the other side of the bar, but not watching. Like adults. Romantic. Well, adjusted adults. 
Family, you're up. Hi. You grip the ball in your hand. And put your fate in the hands of the empty bottle gods. Hey, how you doing? Mini games consist of two parts. On top, a pointer which rotates in the clockwise direction. And on the bomb, a target you're going to be pointing at. This here upcoming minigame is a special minigame. Perfect for the less coordinated because there's no winning or losing. Well, not technically. Wherever the pointer stops, that's your result. I suppose if it doesn't stop where you want it to, that's a bit like losing. But no one has to know if you don't tell them. Okay, ready to play? Or would you like me to repeat that? Go. Ready. Anyway, we go! Spin the ball and see who you're gonna smooch. Oh god. You got spirit. You two are meant to- like literally the first try. You two are meant to be. Psych, you actually have to spin multiple times to get your final result. First to get three times is your true match. That's how you play the hardcore spin the ball on this here island. Now get your spin on. You got spirit. You got Wraith. You got spirit. Spirit is your true match. Whoa! This morning you wake up on a strange beach surrounded by strangers with murderous intent. And you look across a beach tallet spirit. Lust in her eyes, sweat glistening on her skin. Your heart races. That's skin, right? You can feel your pulse pounding in your ears. Spirit takes you by the hand, you sit face to face at a private section of the bar. She begins to reach for you. Putting her hand butterflies everywhere. Putting her hands on your shoulders. You're sweating. But not in the sexy way she is. You're sweating in the gross way you sweat in the interview for a job and I'm normally qualified for. You don't know what to do. If you try and lock lips in this state, you might gross her out so completely that she'll never be able to look at you romantically again. Spirit, I, you, we. I have some bad news for you. I have to my teeth, don't I? I think it might be sweet weed. I have no how long I was in that ocean. No, well, maybe. But that's not what I was gonna say. This... It's not happening. Not now. Maybe not never. If they think I'm gonna make out with some stranger, just because a bottle told me to, they've got another thing coming. And so do you. Name like a ton into your heart. If you even try to make a move under such absurd circumstances, I wasn't gonna. Yeah, I know. You seem pretty harmless. You're not all that bad to kiss. If I were interested in it. Which I'm not at this moment in time. Are we gonna tell them we kissed? We are. I'm not above lying to get what I want. So that thing about me being not that bad to kiss, was that a lie to get me play along? If you wanna know the truth, figure it out for yourself. But don't expect this life to just hand you gifts like me. All I ever was was hand was pain and suffering. Treat me well, and I'll return the favor. Otherwise, try a different round and see what happens. Fall, fall! I hate to break up such a passionate moment that we can only assume was passionate because we never spawned in costly while we stay on this island. But dinner is being served right away, and we must insist that you join us. We won't want anyone dying of starvation. When there are so many more interesting things to die from. Seems like next activity is meal time? How quaint. You're expecting what? Capture the flag? You know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What were we expecting? Some kind of grand hall of a huge banquet table? This ain't some prestigious fantasy epic like you find on cable. Dwight and Claudette usher you to your seat, but there's limited seating directly around you. And oh great, terrific. Seems that everyone wants to sit next to you. Even better is that they don't want to sit next to a certain number of people either. To start, no one wants to sit next to Trapper. Ha! Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to Ray for Trickster. Oh yeah, Trickster's just here. Surprise? Yeah, well, they don't call him expected stir. I'm um, sorry. Even I get nervous around crowds of killers and my whole shit gets a little flustered. Hey there. You're looking good, Manly. Really good. Thank you. And we really can't let hunters and trappers sit together. No, seriously, their arms are too big. They, they can't fit the table with they sit side by side. Look at this. You can't even fit everyone on screen at the same time. You probably think it was an error, but it's not. It was completely intentional. But that'd be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Secrets? 
Okay, Dwight and Claudette are directing traffic, you sit on one side. The rest of them will sit opposite you. Hunters and Trapper can sit at the ends of their enormous, sexy arms. Nice. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin dinner. Tonight's meal is prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope to. Hey. You didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? And yeah, what are we eating? It's meat. Seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. My favorite. Meat is good. Meat is murder. Which you would know, considering what you've been up to. Who are you to get judgy now? I'm just... I'm just sharing facts, and... You need to murder something to eat its meat. So that's, like, technically true. Technically true is the best kind of true. Okay, enough yapping. Let's eat. Hey, Manly. You thinking what I'm thinking? It's gonna be a person that spit, right? Or several parts of overlapping people, perhaps. No, it could be... Chicken. I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree bun down prints, you know. You look closely at the spit. You spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. And we do literally everything on the island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not covering up this delectable meal. Well, he's right for a change. Because I am with my broad axe. It's a perfect tool for easily chopping anything in twain. First, who says twain? Sometimes I swear it's like we're all from completely different historical eras. Second, I'll have this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is caught. No blood. Ugh, you two in a ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough! Grow up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana, folded over a thousand times, is the only option. Obvious. The hell it is! Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you natural hell if you like. Please, stop, please! I hate when we fight, or talk, even when we look at each other in the eye. I can do it. I have the skull of Azeroth. Great, instead of slicing up, you can club it a second death. Hey, Manly, I know this is what you want to eat. Hurry up and volunteer to carve up Felix. I, I mean dinner. Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No hyperbole. They the ones argued over who had the most effective weapons for 72 straight hours. And it doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done, they will take even longer cleaning their weapon. All while explaining the value of maintaining your tools. Despite being a bunch of cold blood killers, for some reason they're always terrified of tetanus. I mean, they don't want to die. Again. Hey, why don't you just let me carve up dinner? Splendid idea. We hate for it to get cold. You hate it when it got cold. Here's a machete. Freshly sharpened. New game's consists of two parts on top of pointer. Trying to pull to be pointing at. Until the pointer arrives. Put the spacebar up the pointer over the target to win. Fill the land of target and you will lose. Do you achieve a perfect success? Land at the start of the target area, not the end. Ready? Away we go! Slice. Not bad. Perfect. Not bad. Perfect. Perfect. That was pretty good. I'd like to see what you do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. Dinner is finally served. For real. The sounds especially coming from the masked killer as well as they eat, which involves lifting their mask and shoving food up behind them are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to be really embracing being dead. And they're all dead, right? This is obviously hell, I mean. Come on. We're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mystery comes easy? Claudette and Dwight aren't the only ones who've been working their asses off to make this night perfect. When these are lifting their masks, 
This is only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they just tried to mash stuff through there. Spirit, why aren't you hungry? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about Manly. Number two is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. You might have noticed that I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. Do you see how deep this cut of my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. Even worse as they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. I think they want an explanation why. What do you want to tell them? Look at that seagull! I'm sorry? And she's not the food of the company. I'm just super self-conscious how I look when I eat. I was just pretending to be grossed out by dinner so I'd have an excuse not to chew in front of everyone. Sorry that made things awkward. I'm actually extremely hungry. Yeah, watching people eat is gross. But try to relax and not worry what everyone else thinks. It's so important to always remember people are watching you. Judging you. Definitely not ignoring you. Right, guys? Is anyone listening to me? A play group that includes one if not more cannibals staring you with meat juice dripping from their chins would be quite scary. However, right now you're barely able to keep your head up, let alone get scared to run away. I'm a narrator, not a physician, so please don't take this as medical advice, but I'm pretty sure you need to eat to stay alive. Oh hey, it's me again. Hey Ocean! Hey. Stop throwing plastics at me. Your friend, mentor, and guide. Narrator to the narrator, the Ocean. Not sure how I feel about the characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're really here. No one can tell you, not unless you follow the right path, or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them, because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise, others lead to something even worse. Starting scenes over and over, having to fast forward back to you where, am I right? For this close- Stop making the fourth wall! For this place holds many secrets, even from itself. But the only thing that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Why are you here? Date monsters? Answer that, and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Vague, mysterious, I gotta give it up to this ocean character. That's some quality early game storytelling. You've got to find Spirit holding your limp body, gingerly pouring cool water into your mouth. Don't you just love the ocean at night? I do. Staring over the vast darkness of the ocean really validates the feelings inside me that we're all truly insignificant, and the only thing worth pursuing is revenge. I have to wonder, how could anyone believe anything else? You look out into the darkness of night and ponder her question. Well, it's a simple question. How could they? How could anyone not feel small and alone in the face of such massive nothingness? You've always been alone. Just like my soul. Maybe it's Spirit's words. Maybe it's the ocean. Maybe it was always been this way. But you suddenly feel connected to Spirit's words. I may not remember much about my life before. But there's one thing I know to be true. I've always been alone. Damn. And I always will be alone. Damn. Spirit has turned from looking at the ocean is looking directly at you now. It's a funny idea, isn't it? Being alone. Together. It's the best we can hope for. Maybe. But maybe it's too much to hope for. Oh, you're crying. Maybe it's impossible. To pretend we know anything. Is that just arrogance? Ugh, I was so dumb. So busy trying to please everyone to be perfect student, the perfect employee, the perfect daughter. I didn't take care of myself and now I'm all I've got. Worst of all, I got distracted from my true purpose, my destiny, the purpose that was sitting inside me my whole life. Okay, this might sound a bit silly, but... Spread looks around to see if there's anyone else on the beach. When she's convinced that it's only you two, she continues. There's a dragon that lives inside me. I've always known, but I've tried to ignore it. When I couldn't ignore it, I tried to push it down. I'm so stupid. You're not stupid. 
That sounds manly badass hero. Right. But I didn't let it out. And then I, you know, chop chop, and now that dragon is pretty much a one-track revenge beast. But enough about me. What's the sign of you, stranger? Oh, man. Nothing but darkness. The black flames of my heart extinguish everything around it. Sucking out the oxygen. Burning the forest. To all that remains is black fire. It may be a giant dragon of fire. Like a dragon, you know, those cool fire dragon things. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. I'd kill to have a dragon. Maybe not the best choice of words. I mean, a dragon sounds awesome. Honestly, though, I don't feel like I've got anything inside me at all. Just darkness. Never-ending darkness. You know, I thought Spirit was the biggest goth on the island until you arrived. Thanks! I'll take that as a compliment. Nice one. Perhaps I could light a torch and search through that darkness. Just the things are really heating up. You hear a flurry of footsteps behind you, and you quickly spin around. But if enough, whatever new danger has popped up on this strange island. But it's people. I knew it! It's people! People are the most dangerous things. And monsters. Monsters are kind of dangerous too. But people! All you'll find that it's Dwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach. Clipboards in hand, which are wavering in air above their heads. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary! And I think that's a schedule. You people seem to be trying to like ruin my relationships. I feel like there's a conspiracy here. Playing sick for cute flirt points was not part of this evening's activities. That's strictly slotted after camp campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? No, I was. No time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's scheduled for after what comes after the flirting. Go, go, go! Gadget. Once everyone has gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claude did quickly make an announcement. We're not gonna blame anyone in particular. But someone, and we're not gonna say who, or so don't you worry, has them sticking to the schedule. You mean me? That means we're behind in time for evening activities. And we we'll only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. Just one story. But story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets a share. How will we decide who? Oh, great. We have to decide as a group. That never goes well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry. I'm gonna chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. Sorry, everyone. I think they're talking about me. Be honest, I still don't understand how the soul schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time while well, I was passed out. Been there before, even though it's taking some pressure off of me. By the way, this is made from the same developer who made that KFC dating sim. Yeah, that one. Which is an absolute dream come true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anything here ever happened on schedule even once? Damn it, Donald! If we try to flex out of 40, can make one more time. So help me. I'll snap your head off so quick. Now drawn in this blood, Cynthia. Fuss and muscle back on. You know that I love a hack, slash, and slice. We all know you love to kill. Something's all you talk about. Nobody named name, any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. I renounce my name. Who's, who's Donald? Who's Dwight? We even know his name more. Call me, call me nobody. But we still gotta get started on story time, so. Manly, who do you think should go? Ah, oh, damn it, that's a name. Please pick something quickly so this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Spirit. I choose you! Ditto! Whoa, whoa, this entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful the catches. Ah! They caught it. Catch raises, will ya? Really? You wanna hear from me? Spirit hops and dramatically rolls her eyes as she gets to her feet in front of the campfire. Don't let her talk you out of it. She's great with ghost stories. I don't know where she gets it, but she comes up with the scariest stuff. Seriously disturbing. Even to me. And I literally pulled the guy's skull and spine out once with my bare hands. Talk about bullshit stories. If everyone else is gonna chit chat, I guess I can just sit down and. Hundreds' eyes go red behind her mask, and both Trap and Rafe take their seat. 
They know when it's worth fighting and when it's not. Well, I hate to break it to you, but tonight's story isn't scary. It's a romance. Too late now. Though, I was selected, and so I'm going to tell my story. I call it... A Prisoner's Kiss. You know it's a Huntress and Rafe are both sharing a giant tub of popcorn. Nobody offered you popcorn. Damn! It was a dark summer night. Warm rain seeped from the sky like blood from an old moon. Detective Hotter, a celebrated investigator and renowned hostage negotiator, was called to the scene of a strange occurrence, unlike anything she had ever seen before. When she arrived, the scene was chaotic. Crowds had begun to gather. A dozen other officers were doing everything they could to keep curious onlookers away. But how could anyone resist wanting to know more? From there, in the middle of a busy market, had appeared a giant box. Strange, alien in its appearance, and massive in size. No one knew how it got there. Was it delivered? Pelt on sight. In such a busy area. How could something like this just appear? A mystery. It was as if, if conjured by magic. But this was no illusion. A huge box was very real. And someone was trapped inside. Spirit pauses her restored look from face to face of each audience member. She has no expression, but you feel her vibrating with energy. She's in her element. Help me! cried someone inside the box. It was a man. Terrified. Trapped. In prison. His voice. Trembling. By now, as if every detective in the city was there. Looking this strange structure. Up and down. Inspecting on every side. It didn't make sense. There were no doors. No windows. No fasteners or seams. It was completely solid and much too heavy to move my hand. Solid, that is, except for a single small slit, just enough to see the bloodshot eyes of the prisoner trapped inside. I don't know what happened. I woke up and here I was. I'm so scared. Please help me, cried the man as if pleading for his life. No stranger to ten situations, Detective Hotter confirmed, comforted the man. She used her training to calm him and buy time for the other investigators. However, time did not bring clarity. Only anxiety, as the night dragged on and no progress opening the box. And as the night grew longer, the seeping rain puddling on the ground, the man inside grew more desperate, more sad. More lonely, more pathetic, and in need of help. But Detective Hotter was no help at all. Powerless to save him, guilt began to weigh on her, like it never had before. Don't let me die in here! The man begged. Don't let me die alone! Stay calm, answered Detective Hotter. You're not alone, I'm here. Hell, half the town is here. We're all in this together, and we won't let this be the end of your story. Looking for that narrowest of passageways, Detective Hotta watched her own reflection in the tear-filled eyes of the strange, sad prisoner. Together, they both wept in silence at the hopelessness of the moment. Promise, asked the man. Promise that I'm not alone. Yes, she promised. I do. A simple pledge. She felt an instant connection like she had never felt before. Not to her family, not to her friends, not to any of her hostages she had worked so hard to free before. And so, when the man's eyes closed and backed away, it didn't scare Detective Hotta, for she knew he would return, and he did. Pressing his lips up to the narrow slit in his horrible puzzle box, repeating his question again, Steam flowing from his mouth as he asked. Promise! Promise that I'm not alone? Yes, she promised. I do. 
and pressing her palms against the cold outside of the box, but truly really knowing why. Detective Hada leaned forward and placed her own lips up to the opening, letting her breath creep into the strange structure, allowing her warm lips to fall on this man's. It was a gentle kiss, a moment of compassion. She could feel in this brief contact the beating of her heart, pulsing blood through every inch of her body, matched beat for beat in this soft touch. Thank you, said the man, no trace of fear remaining in his voice, and he backed away into the darkness, disappearing in a single moment of eerie calmness. Get back, yelled an officer, suddenly thrust himself between Detective Hata and the box, breaking a silence that would soon be filled by a cacophony of whirring gears and clicking latches. A symphony of mechanical activity happened all at once. But something had triggered. As if an unseen lever pulled, the side of the giant box began to slide open. Detective Hata gripped her flashlight tightly and pushed forward into the foggy interior of the giant box. That sounds like a bad idea. Her feet splashed in the puddled rainwater, her heart racing as she swept her light from side to side. And that's when her eyes landed on the man, or at least landed on what should have been him. There in the corner of the box was a pile of Pieces, like parts of a doll, almost pulled apart, or perhaps that's just how Detective Hata had to think of him in that moment to survive. A collection of segments, limbs, pieces, disconnected from one another, cleanly severed and placed in a neat little pile. Atop that pile ahead, cold, pale, eyes open, lips in icy blue. Spirit stares at the fire, her own expression lifeless, her lips blue. Tears fall from her chin and soak into the sand at her feet. You're blown away by the story. And safe to say you're not alone. Everyone else is looking to the fire up at the sky. Anywhere but at spirit. It was you who chose her. You who initiated this harrowing tale. So sad. So creepy. So sensual. She really went into great detail when it came to describing that kiss. Too much detail now no one is sure to act. Dwight and Claudette are staring daggers at you. You have to do something. This game was supposed to be a light hard romp. Please, I said do something. Cool story, bro. Hey, you guys can make it like a song beat here. Say nothing, hunger. You stand without saying anything, approach spirit, reaching your arms around her for a hug. Her robe hovering in the air gets to wrap itself around you and squeeze you into her. It's kind of like being hung back, but also like being tied up. It's certainly not what you expected. Instinctually, you pull yourself away, but it's an awkward movement, and you nearly fall over into the fire. Spirit says nothing. It floats away without so much as goodbye. Uh, without so much as a goodbye, you meanwhile realize everyone had just watched this truly strange interaction from the corners of their eyes. With that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit, so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves, and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for all of seven seconds because Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Hey, baby! You look lonely. Mind if I join ya? He doesn't wait for an answer. Go away, pop star joker. I know, you've been hearing from these copies all day. I want you to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special in those charges of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch on this island. The only lobster in the ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. No! Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of this cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Spirit approaches you. You know, I was watching you while I told my story. I could tell it was having an effect on you. This fog that follows me around. I could feel you breathing heavily, taking me in. Wait, so if I s breathe in your fog, am I breathing in you? Nice. You and I are both absolutely flabbergasted at that piece of information. Legit, you learn something new every day. Even when you're a god, I mean, a narrator. Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero. You're doing it again right now. You need to calm down. 
She come to the hot tub with me. Nice. Napping in the hot tubs of the spirit. You come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow her. Not for like that. Just don't forget our little talk. You and the storyteller friend slip into the water. It's just the right temperature for any evening dip. Plus, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean to the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion can handle it. That'd be a hell of a jump, considering how far we are from the beach. I just want to be totally clear. Even though that story bore some similarities in my life, it was not about me in any way, shape, or form. Not symbolically, not metaphorically, not any otherly. I believe you completely. Sure, you were cut in pieces in your life, and so was the person in the story. A perfectly normal coincidence. Sure, you're on this island, trapped, one might say, in this most puzzling place. Also, a completely regular coincidence. And sure, his lips are blue, your lips are blue. Really? You call this blue? Searching for answers, hoping to find... Revenge! Okay, so the simulator is stopped there, I guess. Sorry, the, uh, coincidences. Get this through your head and wherever you are. Samurai blood runs from my veins. Well, maybe has coagulated by now. No need to sweat the details. Regardless, I'm a descendant of normal warriors. Thousands of years of training of bladed weapons preceded my entrance in this world. You know how many swords that is? A lot. You gotta figure that with my many sharp edges, a person's bound to get disconnected from a body part here and there. The truth is, I wouldn't typically share this, so don't go blabbering about it. I dreamt that story, like watching a movie in my sleep. I was just a little girl. Years before my father sunk his blade in my skin. I've never been able to shake it. That's a very adult story for a child to dream. Do you believe me? Who cares? Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Can you repeat the question? Who says I believe in anything? And for that matter, who even cares what I think? Our beliefs are our business, and no one else's. Allow me. That's a strong tank. You're going to cultivate your own garden. I just admire you, manly badass hero. You're not offering your thoughts or opinions simply for the curiosity of others, like some of the more desperate residents of a little paradise. Good for you, I say. Now you've got me wondering, do I believe you if you believe her or not? And if I know everything, because trust me, I do know everything, I already know the answer to my own question about if I believe your answer to the spirit's question. Whoa! Ocean got me tripping. Sorry, I didn't mean to distract us both. What's important is that a certain corpsey cutie floating in the cloud of magical mist might still be waiting for you to say the right thing and free her from her puzzle box. If you believe that she is the, uh, damn it, got me going again. Unfortunately, before you can follow this conundrum to what will surely be a mind numbing cycle of new questions, you find a certain two someone staying before you with a fresh towel ready to dry you off. I knew it! You people are trying to ruin my relationship! Humans! Humans, get out! Sorry, kids. But it's time for bed. I might be the youngest one here, but I'm no kid. I do have a love being wrapped up in a fresh, clean towel. Are you gonna poke holes in the towel? My mother used to help me wash my hair when I was young. She'd comb out all the tangles and tie ribbon around it, before sending me on my way. I miss her. You watch the spirit stare us off in the distance, her hand gripping into a tight fist. She doesn't notice you're watching her at first. It's okay. Come on. When she catches you looking, she turns away. Roughly grabs a towel from Dwight, and then pushes him and Claudette aside as she floats off. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking to the crackling embers. You think about Spirit's story about the prisoner in the puzzle box. If you manage to escape this place, will you leave with your life? Or has it already been taken from you? And it's just a matter of time until you make a gruesome discovery. Before you can dwell too much on your fate, Claudette and Dwight arrive. Their now familiar creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that lit by firelight. We must apologize for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest. But we're going to make you comfortable to die trying. They hand over a pillow and blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Perhaps some music will put you at ease. Just try to keep the vibe to a minimum. Our other guests aren't the types you want to rob their beauty sleep. Huh? 
Ready. As you relax looking at the fire, the radio begins to fuzz and flicker. You examine the side that you might adjust the dial and fix it. What's... What is this? Let's see what's on this station. Is there anything of note here? About a hundred. Turn off. No matter how many things you listen to, you still can't sleep. The side asks one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. You'd like to summon your side as you lay by the fire. Spirit. Spirit, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Spirit tells you her secret falling asleep when she's feeling restless. I listen to fleet music. Dab on some essential oils. And steam my pores. Really? What? Even the dead like to relax. I don't really have any of those things around. Comb? Spirit reaches out and presents you a unique item. It's a small comb, carved from bamboo. I guess you could hold on to this. It was a gift from my mother. I will want it back, though. You may lose it well. You'll get your revenge on me. It was the last thing I do. You finally start to feel sleepy. Except maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. Like it always does. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky, but now you've had all day of strange voices in your head. But this one is still undeniably odd. The human body is made up of 60% water. Did you know that? Of course you did. Everyone knows that. Even amnesic video game protagonists. But guess what? Drink as much as you like. You'll never get to 100%, you hear me? Don't think I don't see what you're up to. You wake suddenly to see something looming over you. Trap is sitting beside you, sketching a portrait. Oh, you're awake. I saw you with the spirit right before bedtime. You should know they're not what they seem. Not like me, who's obviously completely honest and trustworthy. You probably are. I was out checking to make sure you weren't sleeping near one of my... Actually, never mind. Just be careful where you sit. But since I'm here, I'd like to share two things with you. One, I do not take rejection well. Two, the very f the first thing is very important to remember. Were you drawing me? Trapper doesn't answer. You aren't drawing stink lines reading out from me, are you? Still nothing from Trapper. Look, I'm not an easy guy to get along with, but I am an easy guy to spend time with. That will make sense if you choose to spend time with me tomorrow. Unless the scums live like rats. They wouldn't know a good time if it bit them on the ass. I mean that literally. Point is, if you slick me in for a day of luxury, extravagance, and fun. Yes, I said fun. If I don't pick you, remember what I said earlier. Or it might be the last thing you ever forget. But hey, you look tired. Get some rest. Sleep. Maybe even sleep well if you can. Just try not to roll over to the about 15 feet to your left. Finally alone for real this time, maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. Wait a second, where are we? This is a- Oh jeez. It is. It's one of those reality show confessional rooms where all the contestants talk directly to a camera. Can you blame me for not getting along well with others? I mean, I haven't had a real conversation with anyone since I was a child. I take the fact that I haven't slowed the newcomer for their meat yet as a win. They look pretty tasty, though. So who knows what will happen tomorrow? Hey, Dwight. Do we have a tarragon on this island? Look, I'm always full of rage. The key is knowing how to control your rage so you can use it. I'm a master of self-control. And right now, I'm using all the self-control I can muster. Because today was a disaster. Let's just say I didn't love it. Haha, <laughs> well, that was funny. Laugh. I said laugh, dammit. Anyway, I'm planning to kill this idiot. Don't tell them, though. I want to lead them on a little more. It'll make them much better for me when they're screaming. I don't really care. This island is full of people who don't really like me. So what's one more? I don't want to get distracted from my plan anyways. I know that everyone thinks of me as a beautiful, cold-blooded monster. I can't help it. Circulation just isn't my thing. I don't choose to be cold. This cute hat and robe, okay. Those are choices, sure. 
If someone were to come around and capture my heart, at least that beats being stabbed in it. Besides, if I'm going to get bloody revenge on that society that's used me and thrown me away, maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a little help. Nice. You open your eyes. The sun is shining. There's not a cloud in the sky, and you feel great. Totally well rested. You're not even suspicious of the fact that you fell asleep by the campfire. You woke up several yards down the beach. Wait, are you on vacation? Was yesterday nothing more than a strange dream? No, not a dream. You really are here for another day. Why? I have no idea. You're obviously a weirdo. Yeah. Speaking of weirdos, I see the rest of the gang is hanging out on the beach. This is definitely not a dream. I wouldn't rule out a nightmare just yet, though. At least they make for a sexy bunch, no? Eh, I'm not too fond of Rafe. And talking about sexy, here comes Trickster carrying coffee. And I don't like Trickster either. Morning, morning! Thought you might like a nice cup of joe to start this incredible day off right. It's poison. Trickster seems suspiciously cheerful. I'm sure there's nothing nefarious behind this joyful demeanor, though. Everyone knows musicians are mourning people. I also want to wish you luck. Today is an important one. My only regret is I won't be a bigger part of it. Budgeting issues. Also, I'm just swamped with engagements. Especially on the other island. Trickster winks at you. If you want to ask him how to reach the other island now is that... Never mind, he left. Well, at least he brought me a cup of... No, wait, don't drink that! What the hell was that? They all call him Trickster because he's good on skateboard. And he definitely doesn't get that name because he brings people drinks so they can have a good morning. That was almost certainly not coffee. And I don't want anyone casually poisoning, imprisoning, and torturing you. Yeah. Nice. This is supposed to be a tropical paradise. The type of place you give a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, 2 thumbs up review to. Not an internal prison of pain. Not nice. And please make sure to leave a review. It really helps with the algorithms. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Just trust me, I'm looking out for you, so can we please move on? Hey, wait a second. How did a possibly omniscient, possibly unreliable narrator physically just knock that coffee out of your hand? Magic. A wizard did it. Harry. This is not Parliament, and the floor does not recognize the ocean to speak out to turn at this moment. I need no recognition, for I am the ocean, blub blub. I dominate the land. I submerge those who defy me, and become the watery grave. Oh yeah? Let's see you beat a mountain. Actually, speaking of graves, I'd like to say something. Something of grave importance. Fine, go ahead. Even if this place is an internal prison of pain, I'm not saying it is. Even a place of extreme horror can still receive a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10 thumbs up review. If it was crafted with love, I know that's the type of thing you're into. Nice. You know, the ocean is right. A lot of hard work goes into a place like this. You should really just judge on its artist's intent. Whenever possible, start from the mindset of giving them the benefit of the doubt. Constructing these elaborate simulations, uh, I mean vacations, is not easy to do. Sometimes there are some small bugs or inconsistencies, but that's just the nature of process. Perfection is overrated. The universe is filled with mysteries. We ought to celebrate those who venture to bear their souls as part of a creative process with the ultimate intent of making things for our enjoyment. Not be overly critical of them. Are you trying to try to sell me on this place actually being good? You don't have to say it like that. Especially after I saved you from that poorly made cup of coffee. Sorry, we, we should have been here five minutes ago. They always do this on the second morning. Sad, really. If they do make some great points. Oh, sure they make great points, I agree. Can we please move on? Yes, of course. Apologies, Manly. The last few minutes aside, have you been enjoying your time around the island? Yes, I'm not suspicious. There's no, no option. No, no options here. What an encouraging response. We're so glad you're not suspicious. Hey, Claudette, maybe Manly isn't suspicious because they forgot what they're actually doing here. Zero chance, they're still clicking. Even right now, let's see how you respond. Let's see about that. Hey, look at that. Yeah, they don't know anything. Doesn't matter, though, Manly. 
We're so happy to hear you're having fun. I didn't say I was having fun. We're all having fun, Manly. Badass hero. Do you hear us? We're all having fun. We do need to ask you one more question, though. We all have to send our way our rights to say anything negative about this place. Would you please send this non-disparagement agreement? No. Wait. Hey. No, I will not say anything negative about this island. You have my word that I manly agree with the terms of this verbal contract. Perfect. Delightful. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Yes! Hey Manly, it's still totally cool if you have constructive feedback. The place to leave that is in a positive review, because you all know that nobody reads negative reviews of games or resorts like this. Anyway, I see Dwight and Claudette have gone to a trance, and with the grumbling I hear from your belly, that can mean only one thing. Breakfast. Perfect timing. Everyone rolls into the dining area to land up to lard up those sexy little bellies with pancakes, bacon, and uh, so much for maintaining these beach pods. We're all half naked in a tropical paradise. Can we get some strawberries here? A yogurt? Magic powers only get you so far. Even killers watch their sodium intake. Oh, come on. It's a vacation. You take your plate and sit down, thinking about yesterday and the whirlwind of feelings you experienced. Danger, dread, disorientation. It was like going through puberty again. Except all in one day on a beautiful, mysterious island. It looks like you're not the only one doing some introspection, though. Trapper stands up to talk about how his day went, in case anyone was wondering. Personally, I wasn't. Well, I can't imagine you can make me any angry today than you did yesterday. But I really hope you do. I really, really hope you do. I'm related. Anyone see where I left my cleaver? Huh, <laughs> just kidding. I always know where my cleaver is. Well, that was bizarre. Back to your breakfast. Nope. Now Hunter stepped up to talk about her feelings. This island is treacherous. I don't know what the newcomer thinks we're doing here, but it certainly isn't helping any of us. Whoa, Huntress pretends to be all independent, but is she secretly kind of miffed you and her aren't getting along? Oh well, that surely must be it. No one else would really stand up during breakfast too. And just like that, here comes Spirit. Something's not right. Did anyone else feel especially cold last night? Not in the technically dead sense, but I don't know. Some other sense. It's like, for the first time in a long time, I felt the sun yesterday, and then it went away. I didn't like it. Guessing Rafe had had enough time to work up the courage to speak in front of a group. Ah, oh, perfect, there he is. Take us home, Rafe. I'm glad the introduction of Manly to our island paradise. And yeah, that was in quotations. Didn't distract me from my normal routine. Ignoring all of you and vice versa. This place is an eternal prison of suspicion. And suffering and no one cares. I'm still the only one asking any questions. I'm asking a question too. It's when will Rafe shut up? And now they're all looking at you expectantly. Wait. Are you supposed to stand up and explain how yesterday made you feel? Um, I think I need to process everything by myself. I'll see you all soon. Damn, what a power play. Keep them wanting more. You're getting good at this game, or, uh, sexy true life experience. Shame you didn't get to eat any breakfast, but so be it. After breakfast, you head to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was, in short, a lot. Before you get there, though, something catches your attention. You hear that? Were you addressing me? Hi. Well, yeah, I guess that's okay, right? You know, I might be pursuing a relationship with one of these four fine killers, but it feels like the person I'm getting to know the most is you, narrator. It's only okay in so much as it serves to illustrate that you've lost your mind, seeing how I'm not real and all. Yeah, I heard it this time. I think it's going from behind the pool shed. No, no, stick in there. A little more, a little more. Oh, yeah. That's it, yes. How does that feel? Intense. Nice. Yeah, that feels right. This... This is uncomfortable. They're just working with actual tools. Because that's the obvious gag. 
Maybe the twist isn't th that they're working with tools, though. Twist within a twist. Now, why don't you take that and put it right... Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Just like that? Exactly like that. I swear I had no idea these two even, uh... Do whatever it is they're doing. I'm afraid to look. Please see something so they know you're close by and you hear everything. Oh, oh, wow! Look at this super cool ball of Trickster brand suntan lotion someone left on a chair. Anyone know where I can buy some? Damn it. Oh, come on, a little privacy, please. Dwight is panting and Claudette has a crazed look in her eyes. Sorry, I didn't know how else to let you know I was here and that I could hear you. Well, you know. You know what? What do you think we were doing? You were doing... I, I don't know exactly what you were doing, but it sounded like, a uh, Fun? You think people trying to find new ways to kill each other in a desperate search to make their own death permanent is fun? Oops. We get five minutes to ourselves every day. We spend hoping if we stab each other in just the right spot, we won't get resurrected. I've come to believe that the key is finding the exact place we need to bleed out from. I believe that place is in our appendix. Well, that's what it be there. Makes sense to me. You gotta stab him in the heart. But not, like, the organ heart. I mean, like, in the Kokoro. Do you actually think we were... Me and him? Dwight? Ha ha ha! Ha ha! You don't have to laugh that hard they get it! Aha. Uh -huh. My life is a nightmare. It's somehow it's never been worse than right now. Let's go, lover boy. I know all our entry wounds are our five minutes up anyway. Good luck, manly. You're gonna need it. And hey, if you figure out how to escape this island, please make sure you, your ghost tells us how. That was both a tragedy and a comedy. A... Fragmenty. Shut up, I like it. Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah. You're heading to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was, in short, a lot. So far today has been exhausting, too. But you're dedicated to achieving a true, centered sense of calm. No drama, no bullshit. Just soak up sun in a heated pool. Today you're on a date with you. Oh, I like that. I want to be on a date with me. Who'd make the first move? And aside from that disturbing thought, all is going to plan until a shadow blocks your precious sun. Spiky tipped, like a palm tree spinning over to screw with you. But it's no tree at all, it's... Trapper? No, it's worse. Hey, babe! Breakfast was weird, huh? Everyone just getting up and announcing how they're feeling, huh? What's that about? Some force kind of checking with the group? I don't like it. Fishy. Kind of lazy. Whatever, though. Breakfast is dumb. No one should eat before noon or after 4 p.m. Yeah, I do intermittent fasting. See my abs, by the way? Maybe you can see them later on my private stage on the other island. You know, IP Island. Where all Hollywood celebs hang out. If you play your cards right. I gave you a private show. Is that where, like, Ghostface and everyone else is? All the collab characters. Catch you around. His abs are pretty amazing. You gotta give him that. Eh, they're probably fake. And the blow up bat? Threatening, but adorable. Makes for an interesting silhouette. Genius design. He's a psychopath, just like the rest of them. You don't gotta give him anything. But we're not best friends, just because we had a little talk about doing a little talking. It's not an open invitation to go smashing the fourth wall every five seconds. You tell a manly badass hero. Okay, now that this guy's gone and we've got some ground rules established that we're definitely gonna abide by, it's time to lay back, take some deep, slow breaths, and... Nope, another shadow. These people will not leave you alone. Let's see who it is this time. Oh, yes, nice. Oh, it's Spirit. That checks out. You two have gone pretty cozy. We should get out of here. I know a place that brings a bit of welcome darkness to this tropical nightmare. A trash can? Best of all, I'm the only one that seems to know about it. So we won't be bothered there. I don't even know why I'm telling you, really. It's my private spot. But I guess I've got a feeling that you'll appreciate him the way that I do. Not like these other killers. They don't get me. But I'll get them. Oh, I'll get them all. And I'll get my father, too. And I'll punish him for what he did to my mother and me. Spirit radiates a menacing aura, waving her sword around the air as she threatens, well, the entire universe. It's scary and more than a little hot. You can turn on my menacing. Nice. Look, all this time a murderous island has got us both a little confused about things. Not me. I'm choosing to lean into it. I'd suggest you do the same. 
You've seen her get mad, which is probably enough to scare you into compliance. But you've also seen that there's a more sensitive side hiding within her. Which one do you think will win out? You can send her her offer, but... Before you can decide if you want to go off a of spirit, the Huntress interjects. I guess you could go off a of spirit today. She seems pretty cool, actually. I think if we weren't here on this island vying against each other for your attention, we might actually be friends. We might have something, though, you and I. I couldn't let you go off to her goth lighthouse. Nice, goth lighthouse, I'm right there! Without speaking up first. Yeah, I know her secret spot. I see everything through the holes in this adorable mask. So my offer stands. We can still hang out today. Play room at my cabin. Wink, wink. It's pretty cute that Huntress thinks she has to say wink, wink out loud. The mask barely even hides her face. Tough choice. You weigh your options quickly, because you can only go on one date today, and you also don't want to be hacked to pieces for saying the wrong thing. It's always good to remember that these are all cold-blooded killers. But you know what they say, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade out of blood. And then die a horrible, wretching, writhing death after drinking it because the lemons were poisoned all along. Sorry, this island has really got me tilted. So who will it be? Spirit. I... I gotta go with Spirit. You made the correct decision. But know this. Just because you picked me, doesn't mean I'm going to slobber all over you like a dog, understand? Eh, we'll get to that later. Well, of course I... You've still got a lot to prove to me. I want to believe that our connection is real. But I've been hurt before. Literally. With, with a, a, you know, a katana. A katana that I now wield in spectral form. You feel me? Because you well feel me. I'm trying to get that macho trapper crap. Yeah, I, I feel you. Before you ask Claudette and Dwight to clarify, I'll just let you know that yes, it is too late to change your answer now. You and Spirit arrive at the coast while we're looking at the Black Lighthouse. It's old and decrepit, but still impressive. There's something magnetic about it. You can see why Spirit would be drawn to such a place. You look Spirit up and down and notice that she's wearing all black, just like the lighthouse and my soul. I'm noticing a bit of a theme. Is black your favorite color? Black isn't really a color at all. It's the absence of color. It's a void. Nice. Like me. Hey! Spirit smiles. Look, look, in-game Manly's already, like, on top of it. In-game Manly knows. I mean, we've been, we've been kind of, like, you know, going back and forth with each other. Nature abhors a vacuum. You're not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The laughing waves on the shore of the coast set a romantic tone. The fog that surrounds Spirit everywhere she goes blends perfectly with the mist rolling up over the rocky shoreline. She's at one of this place, and so are you. The peace doesn't last too long, however, as the lighthouse lets out an eerie howl, like a monster dying. A spiraling black light stretches out across the sky. Spirit has to yell at you just to be heard. Oh yeah, it does that. The light and sound recede until you send it silence. Spirit lays a towel down and then pats on gently. Clearly she wants your company, so you oblige. When you do, she takes out some sunscreen and hands it to you. You're not exactly sure what to do. Is this an invitation to get a little hands-on action? What else could it be? Thanks. Thanks. I forgot to bring my own when I uh, lost my memory and fell into the ocean. No problem. I figured as much. Spirit turns away while you slap a lotion over your body. You need any help? Reaching those difficult spots. You see a hand flow around your back. Oh? Sure, why not? Sure, why not? Spirit's hand on your back is ice cold. And she has a soft touch. When she's done, she takes care of herself. You watch as Spirit applies sunscreen to herself in the most unique way, by floating her own hand around her back to spread it on. Ask about the... Floating hands, seeing nothing. Shards of glass sticking out from her. So you don't mind, what's the deal with all those shards of glass sticking out from all over your body? 
You really want to know. You're not creeped out by them. You're not creeped out, just nervous because you know the answer might be very personal, but she's a person you want to get to know. I was just thinking about what you must have gone through to end up like that. It had to have been horrible. It was worse than death. At least death ends eventually. But I wouldn't want to forget it. It literally made me who I am right now. Truth is, I could pull all these bits of glass that are stuck in my flesh out right now. If I want to. I don't want to. Each shard is a reminder of what my father did to me. And what the world did to him. That's why I refuse to play the universe's game. I hate the idea that I'll be forced to succumb to pressure the way he did in the end. The way that fear and anger filled him up and then came bursting out. The way his misery flooded our home and drowned us all. Yeesh. It's hard not to think about revenge. A dragon inside me. It's doing to me what the world did to him. I have to fight it. Even though it gives me strength. I must maintain control. You're stronger than he ever was, I'm sure of it. I appreciate that, Manly. I suppose a little help isn't a bad thing. In life, in love, this world is not a lot to endure alone. Maybe I could use a little assistance reaching my delicate toes for a bit of lotion. You know, having your body contorted in these vengeful poses, it really does a number on my joints. It rubs the lotion on the skin. Toes. 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 Ooh, that was almost missed. Perfect. Come on! Yeah, it's perfect! Feet! Beard admires your handiwork. A smooth, even layer of lotion coating each individual toe. I see what the writers liked. I have to say, I didn't mind that at all. I admire someone who takes what they do seriously, no matter the task. I can imagine you moving up in the world soon. Look up the lighthouse. It's all in a stark form hovering above this moment between spirit and yourself. Evil as it clearly is, in this case it does you a solid by blurting out another ominous moan, and a burst of black light that rescues you from this awkward silence. From swimming out of nowhere, an ancient looking ship appears in the water. It glows. Itself a thing of death. A spirit of a ship that once sailed these seas centuries ago. G -g 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 pirate ghost! Hey, the pirate ghost, we're a ghost pirate. A tattered black flag whips in the ocean air above the ship as it careens toward the shore. Before crashing on the rocks, it must have been drawn in by the lighthouse. You hear the distant shouting of sailors as the old wooden ghost ship breaks up and sinks into the water. How does a ghost ship sink? Oh, right. It does that sometimes, too. Should we, uh, do something? Nah. The sharks will take care of it. Within a minute, the ocean's quiet again, except for the waves. Note to self, hungry sharks. But these time-traveling pirates, or whoever they were, you're half sure you saw one of those cross crossbow flags, are the only one drawn here today. It's Rafe. He's emerged from the palm trees behind you. I didn't come in to break up your date or something. I came here... for that. Rafe points to the lighthouse. He is indifferent to his attention. I've been seeing it in my dreams, shining its strange light on me. I can't avoid it. Through woods and walls, nothing seems to stop from reaching out to me. Duh. It's a hard lighthouse. It does that to everyone at some point. You're no more special than me, those dead pirates, or that mermaid I saw washed up on the shore that one time. You. Mermaids, by the way, aren't even close to as beautiful in person as they are in movies. More sea witch than underwater princess, if you get my drift. It's all part of a vast conspiracy. An epigraph of lies that runs beneath the island. Or something. I'm pretty sure I figured it out. The basics, anyhow. If you come with me, I can... You can get cut. Beard waves her katana, really trimming a couple of buttons off a of rave's tropical top. He takes a hint and backs away a few steps slowly. 
for the quiet guy. He never really shuts up. Okay, be that way. You'll see. Alone at last, tension broken. Deathly moans quiet, and Rafe banished back to wherever he hangs out. You scooch close to the spirit, breathing in the damp foggy air that seems to emanate from her. It's not quite clear how that full fog thing works, but you don't even care. You're feeling this moment. The spirit seems to be feeling it too. She starts to adjust her robe, and you get a peek at the bathing suit beneath. For someone who seems intent on proving how little she cares about whatever else thinks, she put a lot of work into getting into that suit. It's got straps for days. However, you're so focused on what's happening to spirit, you don't see the next interruption coming. Humans! And Claudette and Dwight burst in on you and interrupt whatever you're doing. It doesn't seem like they were worried they'd bump into too much. We're here to make... A very dramatic announcement. Well, technically we're here to invite you to join us back at the beach. Where we'll be making a very dramatic announcement. It's hard being the producers and the hosts. Aren't survivors supposed to work in groups of four? When you arrive at the beach, you realize you were set up. Despite promising an announcement, Dwight and Claudette simply stand quietly. This isn't at all what was promised. Stop getting in my way, humans! Beep boop. Wait a minute. There's no announcement here. But there is a me. You got mud in your ears, friend. I told you to get lost. Don't you see? Lost is what I am. And so are you. But I know the way out. I've got a map back in my secret lair. Literally and figuratively. Yeah, I know the difference. That's why you should ditch spirit and come spend the rest of the night with me instead. You've got a secret lair? Damn it. Who said anything about a secret lair? I said I've got um, a sap. Sap in my secret hair. Is that a flap on my secret chair? Don't change the subject. Don't ask me what he's talking about. You're trying to make a mess of the first nice day I've had in I don't know how long. Because it's not even clear what year it is, but in a while. I'm not about to be ditched for the likes of you. It's not me messing things up. Like I keep trying to tell you, it's this dang island. I've come to accept a difficult truth. What's happening here? Well, I'm convinced that it's our fate. It's not anyone's decision. It's simply the way it will be. There's no use fighting it. What would you know about fighting? All you know is hiding in your spooky little secret hair and crying like a baby while ringing your little bell. So don't tell me what I can and can't fight back against. I was born a fighter. A dragon lives inside me. I can't not fight, even when all I might want to do is hide. Don't you see this giant hat? It's a metaphor. I thought it was just a nice hat. If I do have a fate, my fate is to win every fight that comes my way. Got it. Folks! Oh, you hide. I've seen you hide. You do your little- your, your phase walking routine. What you do call that? Basically cloaking. We all know that cloaking is a type of hiding. Folks. New cloak. I'm not a cloaker. I phase walk out in the open. You just can't see me. You have no idea what they're talking about, but this sure sounds like some video game community forum thread. Minutia, if there was such a thing. Not that you know about that either. It sure doesn't seem like Dwight and Claudette are going to stop this, so it's on you. Ahem. I think I was brought to make this choice, so I'm going to do that now. And I choose... Spirit. When it comes down to it, neither of these two seem easy to love. I mean, damn. Spirit literally has broken glass shards sticking out of her, but she has a certain charm to her gloom. Spirit and I were actually having a nice time. Besides, if it's my fate to end up on this island, well, the hell of fate, really. And don't take this the wrong way, Rafe. But the amount of awkwardness you pack into a single day, no wonder you're so skinny. All that second guessing yourself must burn a lot of calories. No offense taken. It's, yeah, it's, okay, it's true. I can be a little awkward, I guess, sometimes. Right, so I'm gonna stick with Spirit. Spirit breathes a sigh of relief. I've got enough revenge to do without having to kill you and Rafe, too. Yeah! 
That sounds reassuring. Spirit walks around a corner to show you something that she discovered in this place. It knew it was meant to be connected with her journey. A cherry tree. It is just a small sapling, but it's begun to sprout flowers. It doesn't make sense to see a cherry tree here in this place. It also doesn't make sense to see a ghost in a black bathing suit. No, it does. It makes perfect sense. So, you just exempt it. As Spirit steps up to the tree, a cold breeze pulls some petals off and they come cascading through the air around both of you. Wow, this is really, uh... Is this, um, an anime? <laughs> Do you know the meaning of the cherry blossom? They're beautiful, but also quite symbolic. Of course, like all good symbols, their meaning is pretty complicated. What do they mean to you? For many people, being among cherry blossoms is like being in a celebration of life. People travel great distances just to be near their vibrant beauty. However, as beautiful as they might be, they aren't magical. They're simply flowers. They quickly die and fade away. And for this reason, they are also symbol of the fleeting nature of life, of our fragile mortality. In a way, it's a specter of looming death that calls attention to this special moment, to see and appreciate life. How does the duality make you feel, Manly? Frustrate? As you look at the tree and consider Spirit's question, you reflect on your own current predicament. Strand here. No understanding of why. No control. The beauty of this island. The attention of such an interesting companion. It should bring you joy. But it comes at the price of being completely confused and hopeless. You look down and see crumbling cherry blossom on the ground at your feet. As you stare at it, something begins to rage inside you. Like a dragon. How can anyone find comfort? Even for a moment, with death and decay looming on the horizon. It makes me feel so frustrated. It makes me so mad. I want to do something about it. I want to strike back against this shitty reality. Spirit lets you go off, staying calm despite your bubbling rage. She has no thoughts like this. Is that why she asked you? So that you see things from her point of view. I want to be alive. You feel connected to her at this moment more than you have at any point before. You wonder, does she feel the same? Once, the fallen cherry blossoms represented the souls of samurai warriors. Those who were minimal characters. Those who did not fear death. Those who were killed in the greatest sacrifice to honor their emperor. Their lives were short, but their purpose gave them uni. Those warriors saw death coming, but they never despaired. They stood and faced it. They held their swords and struck down their fear. But despite the samurai spirit that lives on in me, in my noble bloodline, my life has ended, but my death continues to stretch on. The cycle is frozen. This cherry tree, it's not real. Though its petals fall, they soon replenish. It's as if it were installed here by someone. The Disney Corporation. You watch a spirit chooses her words very carefully. By something with no respect for the bounds of life and death. But sorry to interrupt! Get out of here, humans! You know we don't believe you, right? Yep. But this time we've got really good reason. It has nothing to do with us being manipulated by an unseen force, because that's definitely not happening. Nobody accused of that, but okay. We just here to tell you that it's time for dinner, silly! Get while it's hot! I guess it's time to go, or whatever. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I enjoyed it. Me too. What a fun day you've been having. I can see it ran all over your face. You're shining. And that's not just remaining anxious sweat from spending an afternoon courting a psycho killer. No, no, you were really feeling this whole romantic experience. Don't worry. I'll keep your dirty little secrets. But enough gentle ribbing. It's time to get back to business. All the, <laughs> appetizing singles have arrived for dinner, including Trickster. Trickster, get out! Get out! Get out of here! Rafe is here too. We're not gonna do the gag where we cram all of them on the screen at the same time again, so just believe me, they're all here, and they're just as sexy and demanded as you remember them. With your love on the line, everyone is being very careful not to offend you by saying the wrong thing. Congrats, by the way, on getting this far. I'm as surprised as you are that these four are falling for you. No, not because of your personality, 
but because you just met them yesterday. That's because of my personality, you see. However, since Rafe seems like the biggest long shot that I'm holding onto your heart, he throws caution to the wind and speaks up. It's a pretty small consolation prize for being the least loved killer on Murderous Island. But hey, letting them have this one moment in the spotlight is the least we can do. And heaven knows they won't do any better than that. I'm sick of watching everyone else gorge themselves while I'm preoccupied with, you know, trying to get to the bomb that's never any nightmare. So deny none of that. I'm not really hungry anyway. So I say we just do a simple cell, or something. The green kind. Not the mayo kind. Mayo is gross. Have fun with just lettuce. Doesn't have to be fancy. No nice iceberg though. There's no nutritional value. Oh, so you want the spinach. Letting Rafe choose was a mistake. That's on all of us. Dinner will be served shortly, but certain power brokers would like to know about your day. Would you like to share your day with the rest of the group? You've had an interesting day, that's for sure. But how will you describe it to the others? Say too much or too little, and it could affect your standing with the group. Okay, but don't just sit there saying nothing. Nothing is not an option. Be coy. It wasn't really a date. More like two people avoiding everyone else and being goths and choosing to be alone, but doing it in relatively close proximity to each other. That's exactly right. Could have not said anything of value better myself. Spirit is clearly happy with the way you portrayed your date. No surprise. She doesn't like people getting into her business. Neither do I. Dwight and Claudette bring out dinner. Everyone eats in silence. No one trusts anyone now, and they are all very tired. Oh wait, no, sorry. That's a truly supernatural thriller set in Antarctica. Not a charming parody dating sim set in an undisclosed tropical paradise. Florida. Bony appetite. Don't you mean bone? No. Almost everything we serve has a lot of bones in it. Even the vegetables. Impossible for it in this island. Everyone eats without speaking. Hmm. Veggies with bones. Interesting tech like texture. <laughs> Got a little crunch that lettuce. A little more than usual, anyway. Tensions are rising, both of the sexual and deadly variety. When everyone finishes, Dwight and Claudette come back to clean up the table. They linger around as you as they pick up the, your plate, take your napkin, and dust crumbs off the table. What would you like to say to the servants? Ignore. Get out of here, humans. Is there anything else we can do for you? Anything at all. Anything? A manners book, perhaps. You're not getting a tip. Here's the tip. Leave. It's fine. We're used to this kind of shabby treatment here on Shark Island. Everyone, if you'd please so be kind as to follow us to the fire pit, we'd greatly appreciate it. We've been told something big is going to happen. Something that will change everything. You can go willingly, or you can go unwillingly. You have no choice. Tough cookies. Did you have a choice of how you said that, dweeb? Yes, and I immediately read how I did. Good. Something needs to change around here. Fire is rebirth. Fire illuminates the soul. I hope the fire isn't too smoky. Smoke hurts my eyes. And I have pretty sensitive eyes. I'm also wholly afraid of it. The fire, I mean. Not my eyes. Because of childhood trauma. Involving fire. And finally everyone starts moving toward the fire pit. If only get away from Rafe's complaining. You take a seat on a comfortable log, feeling the fire's heat against your skin, and wait for other killers to take their places, wondering who will want to tell a story this time. Will, na will narrator tell a story? I bet they've got a stunningly creative mind. Hey, you think, are they allowed to simply place thoughts in my mind like this? Doesn't seem fair. Everyone makes their way in, but something unexpected happens. Nothing. Nothing happens. Something almost always seems to be happening here, so nothing is probably not a great sign. Oh, cool. And now everyone is looking at you. So, you know, do something. Should I pick someone to tell a story, or we play charades? Boggle? Ah, uh, well, we're actually thinking. Why don't you tell us a story? Rave points his spine and skull staff thingamajig at you. You duck out of its way. Who knows what that thing can do? Probably shoots lasers. Try not to bore us. We're just very interested in you. 
Don't speak for me, Honduras. Now you can't tell if you're warm from the fire or if it's your nerves heating up. No, that's the actual fire. They're lighting a fire on you. They're gonna eat you. I know that that fire is right here. But maybe if we stop talking about it all the time, we can start to pretend it's not here and doesn't, you know, threaten to burn us all alive. He's not supposed to hear me. Get out of here, Rafe. Manly was about to make an important decision about telling a story or not. You gotta give Rafe credit. They have been trying to figure out, like, the truth of this island. I'm not the storytelling type. I'd rather not. Why? Do you have something to hide? You're telling us you don't have a single story in your entire life. So sad. Truly, Ubandi has reached its crumbling nadir. I just want to hear your voice. Thank you, Rafe. You can do that by subscribing to Manly Badass Hero. Why are you being like this? Be gracious? Because you're all much better storytellers than I. Looking at you, wooing everyone without offending anyone. The killer is blush, flattered, except spirit. She sees for you, sorry. Okay, that was not a very good story. I don't mean to insult you, but it was actually quite bad. Sorry, but this narrative keeps it real. We just can't end it there. So who else would you like to hear a story from tonight? Look from killer to killer trying to decide who might be the most entertaining. Spirit. I suppose I could tell a story. I don't really want to. But anything I say is sure to be better than whatever you get out of anyone else in this group. Like all good stories, I stole this one from someone in the past, who is dead now, and can't do anything about it. That is a new expression I have not seen on you. It's called the bride, uh, uh, technically, I suppose the fiancé. One winter, a young couple decided that the next spring they would be married. The two were madly in love, they could not wait for snow to melt. So they could join in matrimony and unite their souls for eternity. For the latest bridal trends, they decide to have their wedding ceremony. At the edge of the woods, but a beautiful, shabby, chic farmhouse. Together they spent months planning the details of the wedding. The two created invitations, figured out seating arrangements, and tasted 100 cakes who were sitting on the perfect one. They chose Lilikoi, by the way. So fancy. When it came time to figure out the decorations, however, the bride or the fiancé, I guess, since she wasn't actually married yet, wanted to take the lead and set the style. After all, her boyfriend had been wearing cargo shorts and open toe sandals for pretty much her entire relationship, so he was definitely not to be trusted. In a, having a sign on such a lovely natural setting for the ceremony, the fiancé decided that she would create unique floral arrangements in the local wildflowers that surrounded the farmhouse. And they could be poison. As soon as the sun rose on the first day of spring, she set off into the woods. Each day, she spent hours mapping out where the best blooms could be found and prepared to pick them herself the morning of the wedding so that they'd be at the height of their freshness and beauty. Enamored with the incredible variety of flowers in the woods she surveyed, the bride, uh, the fiancé, said they had not yet been married, became obsessed with knowing just how many they were, so that she could choose the absolute best. When the fateful morning of her big day finally came, the fiancé told her husband-to-be that she had one final errand before the wedding. Excited for the ceremony to come, she dressed in her beautiful white gown, they set off into the woods to gather flowers. Treading carefully, she followed her route, selecting only the best stems collecting them in a basket. However, when she came upon a once familiar clearing, something was not as she expected. Somehow, it was more beautiful now than it had ever been before. And just on the edge of her view was a new bush filled with blossoms so vibrant and colorful. She became dizzy, just looking at them. But the fiancé ignored her sudden spell and pressed ahead, scooping up flower after flower, and every time she did, 
she knew was just further ahead, and possibly even more beautiful blossoms. Carried by the sweet fragrance of spring air, the bride, or the fiancé, crept farther and farther into the woods, until she turned a corner, stepped over a mossy fallen tree trunk, and realized she had been here before. This wasn't the clearing she remembered, or at least, not how she remembered it. The flowers were suddenly overripe, decaying, falling from their stems into festering moldy piles on the floor. Her bees had been, now only flies buzzed, with a scene of flowers had once intoxicated her, the odor of mildew now made her sick. She turned and looked back, but the path was dark. Into a shadowy glen she walked, and walked, and walked. That day, as guests gathered at the farmhouse, the fiancé was nowhere to be seen. Her friends, family, and love began to look for her, but to no avail. They searched the pasture, the tree line, and into the forest, but there were no beautiful wildflowers, or young lovers to be seen. Just old dead trees, trampled vines, and moss-covered rocks. The fiancé stayed a fiancé for eternity, always wandering, looking for fresher blooms to clip, but never finding them. Distracted by a never-ending search for perfection, unable to see that you are loved for who you are. Out there, all alone. I thought it was beautiful and sad, just like someone we know. Hello, story time! Humans! A lot of people like to take potshots at sequels, but I think every good story deserves a follow-up. When you think it's the end, the sequel is almost never as rewarding as the original. That's why I'm much more a fan of the episodic style of storytelling. Eh. Uh, knowing it's a series takes a lot of pressure off of an individual installment. It builds a greater sense of community between audience and creator. Tell me, Manly, if you could delete any sequel from existence, what would it be? Hmm, there's a long list on that one. Don't answer that. We don't actually care. We're just going to make sure that we seamlessly move on to the next segment of the evening. God forbid my small talk get in the way of a romantic Twilight moment. Twilight, I'm going to need you to shut your yap trap. You know that we need to get back to that thing we do whenever we're not on screen. Okay, okay. You have fun tonight and try not to wink wink end up dead. Why did you say the words wink wink out loud and what kind of double entendre were you getting at with the end up dead thing? Dwight is physically incapable of winking. Not since... The accident. And you do know that all of these people are despicable criminals with double-digit kill counts, right? Well, except for Spirit. She doesn't really belong here. She's strictly a victim. Not a perpetrator. No wonder she's pissed. Did I hear somebody scratch talking Spirit? Deal me in. What do you say we take this talk to the hot tub? So we can soak this bod while I roast that ghost with some killer hot takes. Please, enough talk of burns. Things are lit, they're getting blazed. It's enough that these titties have to be set next to a literal fire. Must I be surrounded by figurative flames as well? What if we turned and ran away as far away from this place as we could? Just you and me. And those spiny legs. You're probably tired before you get too far. If it's running away to some place more secluded manly is after, they should obviously join me. Have you seen these legs? Pure power. I have seen those legs. And they do look powerful. Not that my walk speed really reflects my giant stature, but that's because I choose to move solely for stealth reasons. It's my own choice, and it's completely logical. And it's cool. Why is everyone so obsessed with comparing themselves to each other and creating drama? I'm so over on that. Don't you get it? Society wants to trick you into fighting with each other so that corporations can swoop in and sell you fake solutions to all your fabricated problems. That's the goth spirit. Heh, <laughs> spirit pun. I'll be sitting in the shade and drinking something locally sourced while filming through a public domain novel created printed on recycled paper because I refuse to play their game anymore. Adjust glasses. Drinks my latte. It's like she's actually trying to be as unpeeling as possible. Does it really turn anyone else on or just me? Despite Trapper's insatiable appetite, it seems his attention along with the attention of everyone else is still on you for the moment. If you could, I don't know, just pick one of us, maybe we could all move on with our lives, or, um, you know, some special projects we might have going. 
you heard him, will be. Who we head off with for an evening activity? I'm just saying, you may not get a ton of chance to date around like this before your time in Murder of the Islands come to a close. And no, I'm not satisfied with that name either, but with this streaming reality DVD dating show boom happening, it's pretty much all that wasn't taken. I bet you look it up, there's probably someone already taken Murder Island. <laughs> Which color will you pick? And yes, we're back to excluding Trickster because, ugh, that guy. Spirit. Spirit? Oh, he picked me. Yay. Sorry, that was rude of me. I despise phoniness, so I should be honest with you. You make for interesting company. And I love the idea of winning over these other killers at all costs. Even when I hit the game in the prize. But I had a long day. Floating. Subverting expectations. Grinding my teeth as I imagine sweet, sweet revenge. It takes a lot out of me. So don't stop bringing your A-game, alright? It might seem like I hate everything, and getting to really know who I am is an impossible task I'm worth trying. But too bad. You won't know unless you search deep inside yourself. I bring everything you got. Or just say the exact right thing at the right time and look my cold heart an instant. I don't know the rules here any better than you do. But I thought you know the rules and so do I. See so you at the bar, I guess. You were at the bar to find Dwight and Claudette both holding cocktail shakers, surrounded by a bevy of bottles for assorted boozes. Get out of here, humans. Who's ready? They get wasted. As you know, I don't drink. So not me. Unless you mean wasted as in killed. In which case, Dad, if you're out there somewhere, I will find you and waste you for what you've done to me. You really don't drink. Ever. Is that like, because it would just fall out of a hole in your stomach thing, or...? I don't drink alcohol because alcohol is a poison in the body and the mind, and I don't need to act like a fool to have a good time thing. Then why did you choose a mixology lesson as your romantic nighttime activity? Everyone knows this kind of date is just an excuse to get loaded up on booze and make terrible decisions. It's true! Not a single person has ever learned anything at one of these things. Dwight, now that's not true. You learn how to tie a cherry knot in a stem using only your tongue. Whoa, whoa! Order the soda of a splash of my private business. Because that's off menu. Well, I know what I'm drinking to forget tonight. Mixology is a real thing. And it doesn't require alcohol to be interesting. I'll have you all know that I worked at a restaurant before I was violently executed. By your father. On whom you will have your bloody vengeance. Right, right, right. Well, so be it. But you, Manly. Do you drink? Ah, I mean, if she's staying sober. I've got the impression that tonight will be a night I want to remember perfectly. So I'm gonna pass on the alcoholic drinks. Here, here. Alcohol is a false escape. Besides, it's not like sober people can't have fun. You watch a spirit picks up a plump cherry and roughly steps a little plastic sword through it. That's cute. Cherry juice splatters everywhere and its little fruity guts flop out into Spirit's lap. Oopsie. One of the upsides of wearing black. It you know, only shows stains. No take backsies. So, lovebirds, what drink shall we make? Dark and stormy? How about a dark and stormy drink for my dark and stormy date? Nice, family. I like that one. Okay, that one is cute. Please allow us to demonstrate how a dark and stormy is made. First rum, or in this case rum extract, and a bit of apple juice is poured over ice. And then fresh ginger beer is added in. Garnish with a lime oil. And drink. The end. Do you think you're up to the challenge of replicating this recipe, Manly? Replicating. Rum substitute in ginger beer over ice. Don't forget the lime oil! Rum substitute in ginger beer over ice with a lime oil. Not sure I appreciate your tone, but yes, you got. You're natural. A sassy natural. You and Dwight might have more in common than- Don't you dare. Spirit seems to be in a lovely mood as she steps her dark and stormy. She's not even rolling her eyes at your petty behavior. On cue, a literal dark storm begins to make its way from the ocean. You taste your own dark and stormy as you watch the clouds approach. It's quite refreshing. Isn't this fun? Honestly, it's the most drama-free fun I've had since I got here. It's true, this island's actually unironically peaceful. 
And since you picked a simple, delicious drink, we've got plenty of time left to relax. Want to make out a little? Yes. It's like the JoJo thing, right? You know that the yes, yes, yes appears behind your head? Yes, yes, yes. You breathe in a sip of your drink and immediately begin coughing. Before you can get a yes out, lightning strikes a palm tree. That's a new expression, too. Lightning strikes a palm tree on the beach and immediately starts a fire. The activity ends abruptly as Claude and Dwight usher the two of you away from the bar. I feel like this island does not want me to end up with anybody. The gang's all together again on the volleyball court. Seems like only yesterday you were sitting on the sidelines watching everyone get sweaty. That's because it was? Oi! Feels like I've been here a lot longer than that, actually. It's so late that the sun is already beginning to rise. Break it is over with quickly, said I. I mean, you can get some beauty rest. I do not recommend the eternal damnation of perpetual Neroderm. Good thing you've really used your time well since then. Looking to know the gang, the brain, the mogul, the basket case, the psychotic bunny girl, you know, all the four types of people. Anyway, everyone's gathered on the volleyball court for a new type of game. Pitch your dream date and see who Manly chooses. Who's ready for round robin? How round are we talking? Not to eat, Huntress. Each killer gets two minutes to tell you all about their dream date they have planned for you tomorrow. In no particular order, which is a weird thing to mention, right? Almost the order does matter. Trepper, why don't you go first? You think you deserve it, even if it's in the case of subtle dig. Stop talking. Trepper, without further ado, would you like to make us all uncomfortable by pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable, not only in polite society, but with the narrative of this in-world event, and also a large man narrative of a Dead by Daylight dating experience? Sometimes you just gotta say it. Why, yes. Thank you. I'd love to. So, Memley, you think of picking me? What is your final warning? Pick me, and be punished. And rewarded? Tomorrow will suck. Bromley. I'm not easy to get along with, I know that. But I can tell you this much. I'm hiding a secret on this island that will make fans shit themselves with excitement. If you like Trapper, you're gonna love it. And if you're not Mangit. Also, everyone, even confident sexy ladies in rabbit masks, better stay the hell away from my yacht. Sorry. Anyway, Rafe? Well, uh, I don't know. I'd really prefer to just tell Manly privately. Um, I don't really know how it's gonna work with these game mechanics. What if you just whispered to Manly? Is Rafe, like, the true route? Like, they know, like, the most secrets, that's why, like... They, they, they kind of like, the story kind of treats him as, um, push him aside a lot, you know what I mean? Riff considers this for a long moment. Too long. That's fine. Without moving, Rafe lowers his voice to a barely audible whisper. Tomorrow we have to find my bell. I can finally tell you about what I've been working on. It's gonna be really special. The kind of thing where we really bond. Maybe we finally get off this island. Then maybe we can go on a real date. Uh, you done? Is that it? Rafe nods, proud. Great. Huntress, why don't you take a mirror? Tomorrow morning, I'm playing a nice atmospheric breakfast on the yacht. Don't worry. Trapper won't even know it's gone. What was that? Nothing. Go away. Then, oh boy, oh boy. I've got such an adventure planned. It was hunting for treasure. What kind of treasure are we looking for? Guess you have to pick me to find out. Let me tell you, it's primo stuff. Now, if you don't mind, I've got to start preparing. Because it's clear al already that you're going to pick me. Confident, mysterious, I like it. Hey, the spirit? Figuratively! Damn it, Dwight, you gotta watch your words to these people. Tomorrow, you'll spin in the face of God. Die. And be reborn anew. That's it? If you're not intrigued by that, I don't want you. Go draw crayon art with Trapper, and dig up whatever mysteries with Rafe. I don't want those guys to all day. Do you want to at least specify which god you'll be spitting in the face of? All of them. Okay then, so hydrate tonight if you tend to hang with spirit. And time's up everyone. Gosh, you'll need to dream about these options so you're ready to get choose in the morning. Now go dream about all those swoon options that you're ready to make a choice come dawn. Have a swell night. 
Um, did you, did you forget to mention something? Oh, oh gosh, how could we forget? Before you run off to slumber peacefully, there is one more thing to do. No reality survival dating competition parody would be complete without singling out one of our contestants who is already teetering on the edge of a psychological break. And giving them a little push. Yeah, that sounds like a reality TV show. Hold up. This has been a survival dating competition parody this entire time, and I'm just now finding out about it? Come on, the signs are there, you just didn't read them. Welcome to Murderer's Island. It's now time to eliminate one of the killers. Trickster. Oof, it's like butchering, but it hurts even worse. You can't kill the killer. You can you break their heart? Do you dare even try? You mean... That's right. Tomorrow one of these sexy slices will not be eligible to take you on a date. Who's it gonna be? But why? Um, because it's dramatic? Because it's surprising? Because it's a classical reversal of fate? And it'll hurt someone's feelings. Someone dangerous. What's it gonna be, champ? What's your thought process here? Trevor seems like he might follow you in your sleep if you eliminate him. That being said, at least you see him coming. Spirit could be anywhere. She floats. And I hear she can disappear. Hard to track. If you were brave, you might cry. Although I totally support normalizing men crying and being vulnerable. It just seems like he might be an ugly crier. Huntress, she might pretend to be okay with it. But then you'll start seeing her behind every tree. What I'm trying to say is, I don't envy you, boss. So which sociopath are you eliminating? Um, I actually, I don't actually don't, don't mind Trapper, but I'm gonna eliminate Trapper just because I wonder if you're gonna come and murder me. That was very simple. Trapper, you scared the living shit out of me. You were eliminated. That's fair. Honestly, though, I don't care. You suck. But not in a good way. You bore me. You personality free maggot. You wouldn't even be fun to kill you. Which I was totally gonna do tomorrow, the first chance I got. So really, this is a win-win for both of us. Still might kill you, though. Our principle for eliminating me. Sleep with both eyes open. And have fun on your date tomorrow. Now that you've broken the heart of someone heartless, you should go get some shut-eye. And don't worry too much about the broken heart you left behind. Because of course, I'll be receiving a consolation prize. You might not get to go home with Manly when it's all over, but they'll never sleep alone again. That's right. We're sending our lemonade player home with... No! Burn it. Just burn it. Their own mostly new, mostly new. Trickster body pillow. Next big thing is a real trickster. And I'll hug you back, but definitely won't try and stab you. But how do we know? Because I've tried it. That's right, it's Dwight tested. Claudette approved. I hope you sleep well tonight, Manly. You're my hero for what you've accomplished. How can you sleep tonight knowing what you've done? No, not because of the guilt. I mean, knowing that there's a legit homicidal maniac who hates you so close by. How can you sleep tonight? Knowing when you'll do it tomorrow. I don't know how you do it, but you better go before Dwight and Claudette come back and put you to sleep themselves. You know those two. Schedule, schedule, schedule. Wow, what a crazy way to end the day. Elimination. I didn't even know it was that kind of a game. Let's check in with everyone. Especially with our loser. Everyone deserves a send-off. We'll see how things go tomorrow, I suppose. I'm not expecting anything. I tend to shut my mind off during hard times. I know I seem all excited and devil may care, but the truth is, I'm really a pessimist at heart. That tends to happen when... Your mother is screwed by an elk when you were young? Yeah. How'd you know? Well, I'd guess. It's also the only thing you talk about. If you excuse me, I think I saw a raccoon over that tree and I'm feeling peckish. I don't really know what's happening here. I honestly haven't been paying attention. Oh, Manly. Sorry, I forgot. I'm focusing on other things. More important things. One way or another. I won't be here for much longer. I don't handle rejection well. At least I don't think I do. No one has ever been dumb enough to reject me before. Yeah, the more I think about it, the angrier I'm getting. And I'm a giant rage monster. So everyone in this room should be scared right now. Turn the camera off. Of course Manly is into me. Why wouldn't they be? I'm thoughtful. Beautiful. Surrounded by a calming mist. I've also got great hair. And a hat. And since I'm technically dead, I'm extremely low maintenance. Look, I don't like to throw the term anime waifu around too often, but... 
if the body pillows fits. Snuggle it. You know what I mean. What? No, you're not part of this. You don't get a confessional. It's cool, man. I'm not part of anything, you feel me? I'm not cog anyone's machine. I'm my own machine. This whole thing is pretty cute, though. Charmingly low budget, old school marketing vibes. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wish I wasn't so busy right now. I'd definitely be down with a reality TV show style dating competition with survival elements. But I got my new album. I'm coming to tour. Finalizing a new sneaker line, producing limited spirits of my life. Starting a new social media NFT crypto app. Doing these private gigs over at an IP island. My dudes, you gotta come check it out. IP island. It's dope. It's like where the real killers are hanging out. Fully licensed, no legal drama. Lawyers, take a hike. I'm gonna tell everyone that Trickster said that about them, don't worry. I'm talking your favorite established characters from all over pop culture that can't be seen on this island. Hell, you probably can't even mention them, like Ghost Fit. Don't you say it. Look, we get it. You're very popular in demand, but we have a game to get back to, and I don't want to get sued. Ghostface. Come on! Whatever, I don't even care. I'm the trickster. See you around, Manly. You too, narrator. Um, I have a name, you know. Is it Manly Badass Hero? You do? Yes, seriously. They do not pay me enough to deal with a few people. Is it my turn? What? No, it's no, it's not your turn. You're a sentient water. How are you even sitting in that chair? What's a chair? It's a thing you're getting all wet. Now it's gonna smell like mildew. Okay. Rude. Fine, let's just get this over with. It's your turn, Ocean. Do your check-in. Check-in? I was just looking for the bathroom. Bathroom? Are you serious? Stun hollow left. It's okay. Never mind. Never mind. What does that mean? No, not you too. This one's meant to be a confessional time for literally every character in this game. It's okay. You don't have to confess anything. We just been working our ass off for two days straight and wanted to sit down somewhere. This chair is wet! Yeah, I think the ocean just peed on it. How is that pulse? You know what? I don't care. Fish pee. You two are looking pretty pleased with yourselves. I've got something to confess. Oh, great. What's it gonna be? You ate glue in second grade. You cheated on an algebra test once. Watching Trapper get eliminated was the first time in this unending spiral staircase of pain that is my life that I felt even a modicum of joy. Every minute that I'm alive is a nightmare. This place, the sun, these sweet sugary drinks. It sounds fun for a long weekend, but for eternity. <laughs> Never letting rhythm and crashing waves. The willing seagulls. It's like a crescendo song of evil that makes you question why they afraid the foundation of the universe. Why am I here? Why are there any of us here? What kind of sentient being would do this? Please raise me from these existence, make it so I was never born, pull the plug of this experiment, let my soul be free. Please, please get me out of this polo shirt. Okay, let's get you to bed, buddy. I don't want to go to bed. Go to bed means eventually I have to wake up. Yikes, huh? That was a weird way to end. Oh well, what are you going to do? If the camera roll long enough, someone's bound to say something crazy. Anyway, it seems like everyone's had their shot to annoy me tonight. So hit the hay and get some rest. Tomorrow is going to be a doozy. The soft sunlight warms your skin, nudging you awake. Also, you're using a killer crab as a pillow, which it's sort of okay with. Killer crab? What's that? <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, narrator caught me. Oops. You don't know about killer crabs? Oh, right. You didn't go on that huntress date. You really missed out. It was thrilling. Or I guess it would have been. You'll have to play the game again to get that reference, I suppose. We'll see about that, narrator. You pull on your beach attire and splash water in your face. Dwight and Claudette approach. Is that look on their face excitement? Terror? You notice your stomach flutters with butterflies. Someone's in love. Or you've been affected with zombie butterflies in your sleep. It has happened here before. But it's probably a love thing. It's time. Humans! Claudette gestures over to a beach where the killers all stand flanked by tiki torches. It's a scene very reminiscent of a TV show you used to hate watch of your ex. Survivor? Suddenly the message is clear. You are going to declare your affections for a killer in front of several other killers. Oh, it's, uh... Okay, Bachelor Island kind of thing. Hey, isn't Trickster supposed to be here? We paid him good money and make some half-assed cameos in the show. I'm gonna chew his agent out. I don't think Trickster is a natural route. But before they walk you over for your big moment... A little birdie told us that someone in particular has an extra strong crush on you. And every little birdie reminded us that you've been kind of a dick since you got here, 
and we deserve the right to withhold that information, even if it leads to you making a terrible decision that gets you murdered. This is why you don't trust humans. See this? The humans betray us. Just because I'm dating, you know, a ghost? Humans are all like, oh, you can't be dating no ghost. So are you ready? Of course you're not. But too bad. We're on a schedule. You make your way over to the row of hotties. Claudette and Dwight stand off to the side. Hands behind their backs. It's been quite the 48 hours, but there are clearly sparks in the air. And I'm not just talking about this rusty chainsaw. Though I do recommend staying away from those sparks. It's time for our newcomer to confess their love. Wait, I have to do a drum roll for this! No you don't, but who cares? Manly, who do you choose for your solo day? Can we at least do the flower thing? Dwight, I thought we agreed to keep that between us. No, 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 no. Not that flower thing. The thing when the suitor gets a flower is a symbol of the contestant's love and affection. Huh? Oh, oh, right, 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 I suppose. But no roses. They're such a cliche at this point. Well, that's good, because I tried, tried to pick a rose, but I got an ouchie, so I settled for these. Skulls? Okay, no, it's still a flower. I was a little worried there. I think. Beautiful. You've done good, quite. This is a lovely bouquet. I hope Dwight saved some of these for Claudette. They're a thing, right? You're getting that vibe too? Just me? Sorry, sorry, you've got other things to think about right now. Manly, who do you select to receive these flowers and spend the day with you today? I mean, who do you think? Whose round am I on? I wonder if you can... No, you probably get a bad end. If you try to, like, jump around at the last minute. There's probably a hidden, like, affection meter, I'm assuming. You approach Spirit, peering below the brim of her impressively large hat into her hunting eyes. Spirit, since I met you, I've been enchanted by your presence. You challenged me to be a better person, and resisted, and resisted the urge to show me the sharp end of your katana. That part's okay, we can actually work with that. For that, I thank you. I'm ready to take our relationship to the next level. And we shall, up to the eye of the dark storm that is our reality, to the lantern room of the Black Lighthouse. It's time to see what you're made of, Manly. I thought it might be nice to start the day out on Trapper's Yacht before we head up to the Black Lighthouse. Even if I kind of hate this basic tropical vacation stuff like yachts and snorkeling or whatever, it's good for you to see me in the sun a little bit, at least. There's more to me than what you've already gone to experience. I know that my whole vibe can be a little dark. No, that's cool, I like that. The hat. The swimsuit. The plume of floating air. This wasn't always who I was. I was a normal young woman once. Went to school. Hung out with friends. I even had a part-time job working at a restaurant in town. And then, well, I know what happened. Your father, he... Yeah, yeah. He murdered me, and I awoke as an undead avenger. That's not what I was getting at. Something else happened to me. I realize I need to be seen. I don't even know by whom. I just... A lot of time. When you think about ghosts, they're these kind of see-through flickering specters. You imagine reaching out and having your hand go right through them. Oh, Like that sort of thing. Maybe there's some warpy effect on the world around you. I don't know. Depends on which movie you're watching. When I died, well, I dare you to try and reach your hand through me. No, not really. That's not an invitation. It's rhetorical. Why did I end up this way? Who brought me here to this island? Who knows? I sure don't. I've got my ideas. Maybe what happened, if I'm being honest. Maybe I was granted a wish. Maybe this is me, finally being something to someone. Something scary, something violent, something feared. But without a doubt, something. Maybe whoever or whatever did this to me thought they were doing me a favor. And maybe, last may be coming up, I promise. Maybe they were right. 
Maybe. Look, now you've got me doing it. Maybe they brought me to you, maybe? Something certainly brought us together. But I'm not exactly out there digging around in caves or dusting off antiques and trying to find clues and analyze their meanings. I do want to take this experience seriously, though. I want to give the process a chance. It may be a dumb process, but one that I have extremely little respect for as a person. But you just woke up on this beach with no memory of who you are or where you came from. You're having to freak out and simply try and swim away. You're giving this a chance. I actually didn't know that swimming away was an option. I don't think it is. It's not. However, the fact that you never even tried. I think that means you've got courage. Or an open mind. Or, I don't know. Maybe you st stuck around. Because you like someone you met here. Yeah. Maybe. Well, the two of you were getting all deep and philosophically flirty. You got pulled up to the shore next to the Black Lighthouse. Last stop, everybody off! Humans! The river stops. Oh no, not this trip. Of your life. Spirit rolls her eyes and leaves for the shore. I'm just messing with you. This was the only stop. Nobody here is really looking out for our fun. So we have to make it for ourselves. But no! No Nova stops. Seriously, go! Race you to the poop deck, Dwight. This ship doesn't even have a poop deck. Oh, wait, well. Wait, what? Wait, what? As she does a mark, you see Dwight and Claudette run giggling across the ship. Too bad you can't date those two. They seem like they know how to have a good time. No! You did not come into my house and you date the humans in the monster dating sim. You arrive at the beach near the majestic black lighthouse. Its imposing form towers above you. A flock of birds circles lazily. No sense of fear or urgency, as if circling a corpse that hasn't moved in ages. I'm excited about today. See. Spirit places her wrist delicately in your hand and presses your fingers down against her skin. It's cool to the touch, but you feel... Is that... the faintest of pulses? My blood is absolutely pumping. So, what happens now? Now I show you something no one has ever seen up close before. With no one who has lived to tell about. We're going. There. Spirit points to the top of the lighthouse, amongst the circling birds. What's actually up there? Have you seen it? Hey you all. How's everyone doing today? Uh, hi Rafe. You sure seem chipper today. Something strange has definitely gone with this guy. Well, something else strange. Something different than what's usually going on. Rafe takes a deep breath, sucking the ocean air like it's the greatest air that has ever been sucked. Huh. Manly, thank you for choosing someone, anyone else to go on a date with today. Alone again. Forever. This is how it's meant to be. I feel alive. Are you done? The kind of, you know, on the date that you just mentioned. I'm glad you're feeling better, Rafe. But like she said, we're in the middle of something. You mind? Oh, right, right, right. So, what you doing? Head up to the Eye of the Lighthouse. I love it up there. You can really see the whole island from up there. In fact... Spirit, I thought you said no one has been up there and lived to tell about it. This sounds exactly like telling about it. Technically, I don't think Rafe counts as being alive. I mean, I don't maintain the cannon, but... Spirit waves her arms at Rafe from head to toe. And if he's not dead now, he's gonna be when I punch him for interrupting our date. Hey now, we can solve our problems without our hair floating up in any menacing shapes. I'll just be over here, running away. Enjoy the view. Oh! You know, I think Rafe was kidding about that whole being up there. Honestly, the view isn't even on the island. What you can see is mostly ocean, on account of it being, you know, a lighthouse. However, that does bring up an interesting point. Regarding your, how do I say it? 
spirit's hands fold up as she scratches her head contemplatively. You don't need to see her at a loss for words like this. What's your moral status? Because despite what our lanky friend seems to think, the lighthouse is not to be trifled with. It's a beacon of death and suffering that brings doom to it from all corners of this world, if not further. Well duh, you saw a freaking pirate ship, ghost pirate, seemingly travel through space and time only to crumble up the rocks beneath the spooky tower. We decided not to point out because that wouldn't be traumatic now, would it? I think I'm alive. I'm here with you, walking this beach, feeling the water on my feet, feeling the sun on my skin. Here, with me, the spirit. Does that really make you alive? I think we're dead. Or we're going to be. I guess, I don't know. If you come with me up into the eye of the Black Lighthouse, you may never return. Is that a risk you're willing to take? Because we have something. I won't deny it. I feel it. I'd hate for you to simply turn to ash. If we were to commit, right here and right now, to figuring this out as friends, we could put that risk off for another time. Just be friends? All you wanna do is just be friends. Ouch. Is this her way of letting you down easy? I don't know if I want that... friendship. I want you. That's why I chose you. I can't decide this for you. I can only warn you that it may not be safe. You might die up there. And there's nothing I can do about it. Eh, go up and let me die. You take a deep breath and think about every particle of sea air as it travels into your body. It fills your lungs. It may be the last time you have such a thought you feel strangely at peace with that information. I don't need another friend. I want something more. I'd risk my life for it. Spirit smiles a quirky, devilish smile. Simply devilish, Seymour. Right this way. Stay down, live for sure. I'm not sure I'm ready to maybe die. I wouldn't want to lose you as a friend so soon. You know, choice is a funny thing. Is it real or is it an illusion? Are you alive or are you dead? Sometimes there are choices that go nowhere. It's a choice that figured out as friends and yeah, dating sim. It's not you, Manly, it's me. I appreciate your honesty. I'm definitely not into thrill seekers who rely on risky behavior to make their otherwise boring lives just a smidge more interesting. And it's unlike some of them haven't tried, as we see even just days before you arrived. That being said, another time is not right now. Right now, I need to go up into the lighthouse. Alone, I guess. It's been fun. Inside yeah, so the lighthouse is almost pitch black. It was seemingly day when you step through the door. But inside this place is like a void. The last thing you see is the funnel rays of sun leave you as a horrible sight. Manly's soul. A petrified body laying over the stairs, reaching out up, but down as if it had been crawling. Watch your step. The things we do for love. It seems fine. I think. Some of those clouds look vaguely like humans. When you arrive in the lantern room at the top of the black lighthouse, you breathe a sigh of relief. The light is out, and seemingly defunct. Dust cakes the room, as though it hasn't been operated in a century. However, somehow, it was just morning a moment ago, but now it's night. What do you mean a moment ago? We've been standing here looking out over the ocean all day. I've really enjoyed the peaceful time to get with you, taking in the view, standing in complete silence for hours. It was kind of my perfect day. Really, I don't remember that. I just called it the perfect date, and you can't be bothered to remember it. What kind of game are you playing with me? I want to remember it, it's just that for some reason my mind is completely blank. But hey, I'm not dead. Or. You're already dead. And you have been. This whole time. Hmm, that's true. Maybe we'll never know. It doesn't look like the light is working. You've been turned off. The light has a power to it. The massive lens refracts moonlight through itself. A subtle sparkle that has a hypnotic effect. I mean, that's where the day went. Staring into this light as the sun fell and the moon rose. Thanks for spending a day with me. I really had a good time. 
that's it. Don't get me wrong, this is really cool and all, and I just... I guess I don't know what I expected. You expected an R18 game. I suppose if you thought you were walking to your death, and nothing happened, it might feel a little bit anticlimactic. Sorry. Anyhow, it's time to go. Here, let me just flip on the light for the staircase so it's easier to get down. Hmm. The stairs look still look pretty dark. Maybe it... Spirit is remembered by a strange hum, and then becomes frightening clear to you. That switch wasn't for the stairs, it was for the main lantern. A lantern that is now beginning to power up. Um, you just activated the cosmos. The faintest smell of burning begins to reach up to your nose. Oopsie, looks like maybe that switch wasn't for the stair lights at all. Now we see who's really alive and who's really dead, I suppose. It was bound to happen sooner or later. You slam your eyes closed, hoping that somehow not looking at the light itself will protect you. Is this a reference to the Junji Ito? Uh, uh it was a couple of chapters of uh, Uzumaki. Not sure I see the logic in that, but if it is magic, it kind of defies logic. I want to see it, but, well, I'm a little scared. Don't look directly in the light. Open your eyes, and look only at me, and I'll keep you safe. I'm fine with that. Oh no, it's a minigame! Yeah! You're doing it. We're together. Watch this incredible light. You're so brave. I feel seen by you. Truly seen. Seen by anyone. For the first time in my life. This is our destiny. To be together. Brought together by the darkness. Brought toward the light. Despite your attempt to resist it, the incredible force of energy from the Black Lighthouse's lantern eye refuses to subside. No, it cannot be ignored. It doesn't matter if you look directly at it or not. In the end, that was just a trivial game. This is real life, and real magic. You stare at it now, and its power penetrates your mind. Hey, it's been a while. How are things? Bad. Doing good. Feeling more dead or more alive. Feeling kind of in between. Just like real life. Yeah. Love will do that to a person. Don't worry. It'll make sense soon. You wait to hear Spirit's muffled voice. You've got a terrible taste in your mouth, like burnt hair. The air feels damp and smells like ash. Catch him. It takes time for the sound to clear up, but eventually Spirit's word starts to make sense to you. However, it's clear she's talking to someone else, not to you. You know how people sometimes people say, it's not you, it's me. Well, this time it is you, and it's also me. I can't believe I thought you would change for me. I can't believe I thought what you were doing was a sacrifice. You never gave up anything up for me. Well, today I saw what love looks like. It looks a whole lot different than this. I don't think you're hearing me, which is weird. Because I'm practically shouting. Nobody breaks up a trapper. Nobody. Oh yeah? Fine. Nobody breaks up a trapper. But I'm not doing that. I'm dumping- Don't you say it. Hey wait, you people are dating? Hold up! I'm dumping Evan McMillan. There's nothing you or he can do about it. It's over between us, Evan. Renai. Trapper turns from spirit and looks directly at you. You realize that you're laying on the ground of some weird tunnel. I think that your shouting woke up manly. My shouting! Fake snore? I'm sorry, I think I interrupted something. Very personal and also quite scary. I swear I wasn't trying to listen in, but I heard a lot. Probably not everything. I think I woke up in the middle. What did you hear? Just you dumping trapper. When did you start dating? We were never together. I mean, we were together. Wink, wink. 
I know you're wearing a mask, but we can see your eyes. You don't need to say wink, 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 or out loud. Another reason I'm right to have dumped you. You did not. It was mutual. The jig, as they say, is up. They know you're awake now, and you're gonna have to deal with this awkward situation head on. Clearly I shouldn't be here. You're having a very personal conversation that I don't need to be involved in. I don't even know how I got here. Not here on this island or here in this creepy tunnel. As far as this island goes, your guess is as good as mine. As far as this tunnel goes, we brought you here. We? You and Trapper, but... After the lighthouse light came on, you blacked out. On your way down, I thought you might have hit your head or something. It's hard to tell what blood is new or old around here. Either way, I want to get you someplace safe, and so I asked Trapper for help. It's not that I can't carry you. I just didn't feel like it, you know. I hate anything messing with my shards. Trapper, on the other hand, he loves nothing more than having an unconscious body draped over his shoulder. I could have asked Claudette and Dwight for help, but I don't trust them. I mean, they are humans. But you trust Trapper! Like and trust are two different things. You might think Trapper can be a real jerk. And you'd be right. But you get what you see with him. We brought you down here because we're the only ones who know about this place. It's part of an old tunnel network that connects different places on the island. What's up, guys? Talking island mysteries? My favorite topic. I was just in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd pop in. Trapper, you said this place was private. Don't look at me. I didn't tell him about. Half the appeal of this spot is getting away from people like him. Well, jeez, I can see what I'm not wanted. So you three, uh, trouble an hour. Because I gotta say, I really didn't get the whole Trapper Spear thing. But hey, it's not my business. I don't stick my nose in it. We were not a thing. Nobody traps Trapper. Not with traps. Or with relationships. And you do realize you're sticking your nose in our business right now, right? Wow, so hostile. If you don't want to talk about it, just say so. Anyhow, this tunnel has some very interesting features. If you head about 50 meters down that way, you'll find... Get out! Rafe looks around just to be doubly sure that Trapper is addressing him. I was just leaving. This island is a lonely place. Which is great for me. I love to be alone. Trapper, on the other hand, he's quite needy. And after a lot of pursuit, I finally let him catch up to me. And it became, well, I don't want to call it a relationship because somebody really didn't want to have that talk. But we're more than friends. Hmm. I dispute the events as told for the record. I don't pursue. I stalk. And I lie in wait. Seeing eye to eye was not one of the things we were good at. So I hate to ask, but did I just look in the refrigerator sized death lamp, so I'm guessing more of a glut for punishment than I thought. What were you good at? Well, for starters. Excuse me, I'll take that question, thank you very much. If you know anything about me by now, it's that I'm on a quest. For revenge. Exactly. We might not know. Trapper is like a Greek classical maestro of revenge. Trapper blushes behind the mask. That's one way to compliment a killer. Revenge against friends who had turned their back and betrayed him. Revenge against his father for making him into a monster. Revenge against a barista who wrote Ewan on his cappuccino, knowing his name was actually Evan. For someone who thinks about revenge as much as I do, Trapper is an inspiration. But they seem to never date your heroes. Good advice, but I don't think that's the saying. And then you came along, Manly. You showed me that it's okay to be lost, to feel pathetic, to push on when you have nothing real to offer anyone. Yeah! I'm not sure we got all that from, but okay. You held a mirror up to my own doubts and fears and showed me that they aren't everything about me. That I can embrace those things, but not be defined by them. You showed me that life after death can be more than just an obsession with revenge and mind-blowing sex on the ground and dark cave or a dusty old tunnel. Hmm. Hmm. Trapper nudges you in the ribs of his elbow. Gross. Clearly appealing to Trapper's better futures has been a winning strategy for dumping his ass, because he seems to be taking it quite well. 
This whole half-assed dating show parody thing. At first, I obviously thought it was such a lame idea. When kind of moron thought there was an audience for this? And then we spent some time together and I realized... There's actually something real here. And I don't want to give up on it. I don't want to give up on us. Listen, Manly. Well, you were knocked unconscious by some minor head trauma like a total weakling. Spirit confided in me that she has real feelings for you. I took it to her extremely well. Naturally, because I trust her and value her opinions. That doesn't mean I trust you. If you want to get to her, you have to get through me first. By trap passing Trapper's Test TM, coming to be your dead on Daisy Bear. Welcome to Trapper's Test. Answer my questions correctly or die by my blade. Question 1. What is Spirit's real name? The one given to her by her murderous father, which she only lets her frail friends call her. Rin. Tachiko. You me. Okay, you got that one. Don't celebrate yet. Question 2. What lives inside Spirit? A dragon? Sure, everyone knows that. It won't all be this easy. Question triple. When did Spirit work back when she was around normal college girl? Where she was hell-bent on revenge? Restaurant. I know. The thing I would take a waitress. Don't tell my father I ever mingle with health like that. He'd be so disappointed in me. Question four. I mean quads. What's Spirit's favorite color? Black. Are these questions largely superficial? Sure. Maybe I didn't get to know Spirit that well. Maybe that's why she dumped- Maybe that's why it didn't work out for us. Who knows? Question five. The final question. You got this, Manly. Thanks, narrator. According to Spirit, what's worse than being dead? Not being seen for who you are. When I pitched Trapper's Test to the suits at the BHVR TV, they told me there was no room in the budget for a new car to be given as a final prize for winning. So I killed them all, right there on the spot. While killing them didn't solve any of the budget problems, it sure did feel good. I'm telling this A, to brag, and B, to explain, but the only thing you're going to win is me saying, congratulations for passing Trapper's Test. Not that it was some huge challenge, I mean, the woman obsessed with a giant light that shines in the dark has a chip on her shoulder about being seen. Go figure. You probably guessed. But rules are rules. You might literally just made them up, you got it right. So I guess I approve you dating spirit, or whatever. I never really, never really cared in the first place. I was just hoping you'd slip up and give me an excuse to wet my blade with your blood. Maybe I'll find a reason tomorrow. For now, you two have fun. Wink, wink, wink. Trap her out. I'm sorry you had to endure that. What, five of these questions? It was nothing. I'm gonna purposely fail the quiz here, just out of curiosity also. It's cleaver time. Your death wasn't bad enough, the last words you hear before Trapper's weapon splits your entire body in half is an extremely lame catchphrase. I like the part when Trapper was like, it's Trapper time, and then he mobbed. Not even that. As ridiculous and unnecessary as it was. The whole thing. The wake up in a random tunnel. The overhearing our argument. The news that Trapper and I had something going on, and the stupid quiz. All of it. Especially the whole Trapper out catchphrase. It's only because I actually like you. Never would have happened if I didn't. And I, I like you too, spirit. Please. Call me Ren. Ren. I didn't really feel like our lighthouse experience was complete. There was something else I wanted to show you. Alone. Up in the lantern room of the tower. I like how the name has changed. Get your mind out of the gutter, Manly. It's not that kind of game. Or is it? What's that? Hold on a moment. I'm being told no, wait. It is that kind of game. Disregard the gutter comment. See? I'm on top of this narrator. Come back up there with me. There's no place I'd rather be. Excited to return to the land room of this lighthouse, despite all the drama and worry that was previously a part of this place for you. More importantly, you're excited to be there with spirit. Which makes it all the more crushing. You're entered by the arrival of humans of Claudette and Dwight. 
Oh, that Dwight. Funny seeing you here. Wait, did I say funny? I meant tragic. Tragic? I don't think so. What could be tragic about a family reunion? Those are always joyous occasions in my experience. Before they can explain what that's even supposed to mean, the lighthouse begins to howl, a low, frightening sound. The lens begins to glow in a now familiar way. Prepare to shield your eyes, in case something bad happens to you again. Now isn't the time for any reality show with Jason and shenanigans. Dwight, Claudette, shield your eyes. We don't know what the lighthouse will- Now, now, please don't interrupt. You think after all this time you'd know that we've got your best interests in mind. Wait, what? No, of course I don't think that I- You got wax in yours, friend? I ask you not to interrupt. Too late. The black light flares. In the darkness you see something horrible and strange. In a place of Claudette and Dwight are two ghoulish, ghoulish silhouettes. But before you can focus on them, the light passes and the two survivors return to their normal states. It's breezy up here. I should have packed a sweater. What in the hairy hell? Hey, watch the language. You shouldn't speak that way. Around your elders. Grandpa! My little Rin. You're such a woman now. They grow up so fast. Uh, what? Manly. Me, Grandpa. Kazan Yamaka. Well, technically not just Grandpa. Technically he's my great 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 grandpa. That's a lot of greats I've seen in a row. I haven't seen my little Rin since I watched her from over from the afterlife when she was just a little girl. And I expect you all to say the greats. It's a matter of honor and respect. Except Rin. She can do whatever she wants. My precious little angel. But you! Only stares at you with demonic red eyes. You're pretty sure even the decorated third eye in this mask is looking at you. You mongrel! You must treat me with respect, or so help me. I'll be cleaning bits of your head off my cannibal. A cannibal is like a metal baseball bat covered in spikes, FYI. I'm not sure what a peasant like you is doing so close to the center of a noble Yamaoka building in the first place. Dirk, Nadine, explain what's going on to me. It's right, sir. I called it. Remember, we explained to you that we were going to come meet you with your great, 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 great granddaughter, Suter, and to give or withhold your approval. Five greats. Great, 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 great grandfather, sir. Your honor, your master, sir. Dwight, he's a samurai, not a judge. Ah, uh, eh, some overlap sometimes. Grandpa, they must have summoned you because they think you have great judgment. And because if they summoned my father, I'd be too distracted by torching him for all eternity to get you the rest of the... Whatever this is? Show? Game? Experience? Oh, yes. That makes sense. Only a man of my own power and magnitude can help. self important much? Nice to meet you, Kazan. Only my friends and family call me Kazan. Those who come up in fear at my presence, call me Oni. You're seeing a serious resemblance to Trapper not only the sheer size of the man that Oni is, but also his attitude. Apparently spirit as a type. Huh. You sure you can, or want to measure up to that? It dawns on you that, wait a second, maybe you do resemble Oni. Every time you try to look at your own reflection, however, you've become dizzy and confused. This definitely deserves more thought. But now's not the time to consider the fact that you might be some kind of hulking vampire. With the first ever case of self-blindness, there's a massive samurai mad dogging you from two steps away. Well, you don't scare me at all. So I'll stick with Kazan. Peasant! I realize now the true purpose of my visit is to extinguish your light. Only waves his katana in the air at you menacingly. If the great 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 grandfather, like great 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 granddaughter apparently, Hold up there, Grandpops. Not so fast. You're only supposed to kill them if they deserve it. First you get to know them a little better. 
young people these days. Always waiting to kill people, insisting they must deserve it. Back in my day, you did what needed to be done, because your nobility depended on it. In his day, for such an imposing presence, he sure is giving off serious old man yells at cloud vibes. Strife. You see, when I was a young man, we didn't have foreigners on land. Didn't need them. We had an abundance of culture already. A little too much, if you ask me. But I didn't make the rules. The rules did exactly how it should be. Literature, art, commerce, theater, fashion, poetry, puppet shows, ghost stories, courtesans, gambling, fighting, fine dining, fast food, public executions. What are we talking about? Spread giggles at our great great. Okay, I'm not saying all those every time. And Oni's forgetfulness. You wonder, does she even like this guy? She her sure hates her father, so. Listen up, old man. Good time for you to list every activity available to a samurai in the entirety of the Edo period. Silent, peasant. You're showing your ignorance. Samurai were forbade from any activities that didn't affect the Bushido code. Such as attending certain theatrical performances, for instance. Sometimes, however, a samurai put on disguise and to seek out entertainment. Now, I'm not saying I did that, because I had honor, and what about the entire castle that is quite hard to hide? But clearly you have neither my honor, nor my physique. You don't even know about the ins and outs of shooting rules of traditional Japanese samurai's etiquette. You fool! Rin. What would you want with such an uneducated admirer as this? I like anime. Yeah, that, that counts as a skill. You find it hard to believe that any contemporary person knows all that much about who was and wasn't allowed to do with what leisure activities over 100 years ago. I do. Sadly. However, you're really not sure how to handle this massive demonic old man. Oh wait, I get it. Sweet Ren, my beautiful descendant. You've invited me here to do what you're too kind to do. You're not gonna say kill me, are you? Bash this jerk's head in. Claude. Doris, fetch me my kanabo. Rin, wrap your robe around this mongrel's hand and hold them still. We'll splatter the brains on the beach together as a family. Grandpa, no. That's not why I invite you here at all. In fact, I didn't invite you. Claudette and Dwight did. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Wink, wink, wink. This whole saying wink out loud thing is getting out of hand. Him and Trapper really do have a lot in common, don't they? I swear, Manly has a good soul, and the heart of a warrior. They fought for my love, in their own way, faced down death more than once, and put up their fair share of nonsense. Nonsense which seems to be endless. Can we, I don't know, wrap this up already? Of course, of course. Who might expect anyone to wait around for my approval? I've only been hanging out as a ghost and watching my bloodline be polluted by cowards and quit us. The five generations. Just come give your ancestor-in-law a hug. Sword drawn only beckons you closer. There's no way he has ever hugged anyone in his entire life. I, I think I'm good over here, actually. Rin! Now! Push him my way and I'll split them in half. The sacrifice of this usurper to the Amalco bloodline will surely bring us back to life and set us back on a course of honor. You're so silly, Grandpa. We both know the only sacrifice can get our family back on track. Revenge on my father, your great-great-great-great-grandson. Traitor to the Yamoka name. The lust for violence in your voice. It fills me with cheer. I'll never forget who I am. I suppose if this is the person you want to be with, to go on your journey of bloody revenge with, I should trust your judgment. The strength inside of you blooms from the same cherry tree that was planted centuries ago. I have shared ancestors. And if Manly ever treats me purely, you have my word. On our family's honor, I will wield my katana and get them like a fish. Nice. A tear rolls down from behind Oni's demonic mask. You sure you want to marry into this? I think it's fine. And one last word of advice, my dear girl. The father stuff. Don't forget. Made me stop focusing so specifically and obsessively on it. What he did, it was awful. But it was already done. Do something for yourself now. 
Just my two cents. Be well, Rin. I will see you again soon. Let's go, Sevens. Clint. Denise. Return me to the stables. I assume my dragon has been fed and attended to. Um, yes, sure. I swear that's still better than the Trapper's dad. I'm sorry if I was disrespectful of your great, 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 great grandfather. You seem like a very special man. I realize I'll never measure up to someone like that. A warrior with a hell of a fashion sense. I mean, that mask, I, it really is nice. Don't worry. I would never expect you to. Or want you to, really. If all I want was the biggest brute alive, I'd be down in Trapper's Cave right now, avoiding his vintage bear traps. Huh. That's not the life I've imagined for myself. The sense of abstract duty, anger at the world changing around me, a lust for blood. That's no way to live. And yet, as you now know, that is the Yamalka way of life. However, I'm cursed to battle against the dragon lives inside me. Or at least, maybe I was. Until now. Call me the Dragon Tamer, baby. You haven't won this game yet. Please don't ruin it. Sorry, I have no idea where that came from. I think we spent enough time in this lantern room. We should get to the, back to the beach. The moonlight sets a romantic mood as the storm clouds roll in and surround the black lighthouse. You know, the sun might have set, but if we wait long enough, it will rise again. Huh. This is the first time we've actually seen you about the, uh, full outfit. Spirit removes her sheer robe, showing her strappy black bikini. Her pale skin glows under the light of the moon. Maybe you could help me get a head start, applying tomorrow's sunscreen. Again? I mean, yeah, of course. Last time was, well, I definitely felt more connected to you afterwards. To be totally real with you, I kind of just asked you as a goof, but I really enjoyed it. I swear, though, if you tell anyone about this, I will not be labeled a foot freak. Not that there is anything wrong with feet. It's just that something about that kind of attention really gets people talking. Steady, steady. Why? This game focuses on feet so much. Toes. Toes. Someone's gonna like take a clip of that. <laughs> they always do. They put it on TikTok somewhere or something weird. God, that's so kind of hot. I love the feeling your hands sliding up and down my feet and between my toes. You sure the person writing this wasn't a, uh, foot person? My skin is never more moist. Yeah. Get up here right now. Whoa, wait, what? Before you can find a towel, wipe off your lotion hands. Spirit grabs you and pulls you in close. Her lips lock onto yours. The is soft and warm. The sensation is... incredible. Clouds cover the moon and you find yourself on the beach of a spirit in complete darkness. You can feel the narrow straps of her bathing suit come undone and come to life. Snaking through the air, wrapping around your body, lifting you up off your, of your feet. Come here, you. So this is what it feels like. To fly. As spirit pulls you close, you feel bits of glass press into your flesh. Pain and pleasure. We have such things to show you. And wash over you like the ocean. Salty air stinging your skin as you writhe against your undead lover. The lighthouse howls. In the darkness, you're pretty sure that spirit lets the dragon inside of her take over. If it kills you, you're sure it will have all been worth it. Nice. The clouds part just as you manage to pull yourself exhausted away from spirit. Thanks. A chunk of broken glass is lost in your shoulder. You pluck it from your skin and drips blood. I guess this is a blood pack now. Sorry, I think this got stuck to me when we were, uh... No, when, it, you know, I was having the best night of my life. Spirit drags her fingertip over the sharp end of the glass shard. Keep it. Consider it a memento. I got plenty more where that came from. Back on the beach, the ever killers roll their eyes as you show up with spirit. Doing that couple's thing where you walk over your hands in each other's back pockets. You know it's obnoxious. But love will do that to a person. Last day, you beautiful piece of meat. Shut up, Ocean. You've done so well. We're almost at the finish line. 
You didn't think I brought you all this way without a plan, didn't you? What kind of sinister body of cell war do you think I am? Humans! We had my spirit, welcome back. Since you're both still alive. We can assume you had a good time. You point to the many open wounds in your body, can we do bits of sand and dirt stuck in them. I think I got an infection! And that's okay! Uh, yeah. You could say that. I see you over there in the corner, spirit. Rin, actually, let me say. I think some of those might be infected. You should really get them checked out. Oh, they are. If you're actually going through this, the thing you should get checked out is your head, my friend. Spirit is absolutely nuts. You won't survive a week dating her. Didn't you just give us your blessing like three scenes ago? You might think that she's all sad and respective, but the truth is she's a demon hell-bent on revenge. We're only stopping nothing to satisfy the lust for death that courses through her veins. I can't get her on my mind. Shut up, Trapper. Oh, duh. I know all of that and I think it's hot. She's the goth girlfriend of my dreams and you're just jealous. You lost her, so you're trying to run me out of town. Well, guess what? I'm not scared of you, giant muscly man. That's a demon immortal thing, probably. That plants traps around generators. I'm with Rin now, and she's got my back. Literally. She carved her name in it with a piece of broken glass. Thank God it was only three letters long. Man? Alright, alright, we get it. Everyone is super tough. All you do is kill, 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 no matter what, what, what. We've got a show to finish, and this is the finale, so we need to hold on just a moment longer. After all, that was the point of this whole experience. To give you the most demented killers a chance of finding love. And it worked! I think my official bio called me distinctly below average. Look at me now, world. I'm about to officiate the wedding of two complete maniacs. Please, spirit, take this bouquet and prepare your vows. As soon as you both say I do, we can send you off on the, your exclusive honeymoon. It's not trapped, is it? Hold up. Nobody is saying I do today. Yeah, nobody's- oh, wait, what? Marriage is an archaic social institution. Been in place by men in power thousands of years ago to maintain their control in the world. I'm not interested in playing that game. I'm not interested in doing what anyone tells me. Living money in rules I don't believe in. Deep down in my heart. If I- now that I think about it. I don't remember being asked if I want to take part in this bootleg reality TV bullshit in the first place. Did anyone in here agree to this? I'm still not entirely sure what's going on. Spirit has manifested her katana. And in a moment, the mood has changed from romantic climax to a place of terror. Whoa, 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 we're all having fun here? You just say I do, we can... I won't. With a slice of our blade, Claudette is no more. Replaced by two halves of Claudette. Claude and Ed. Never which are especially alive. Dwight is horrified. There's a chance he actually wet himself. Unlucky for him. Khaki hides lots of things. Unlucky for him, urine isn't one of them. Meanwhile, Trapper Hunters and Rafe are eating popcorn. Where'd they get popcorn? You're under the impression that Claude and Dwight did all the cooking around here. So, sorry, now that's the time to think about who popped the popcorn. A gruesome murder just happened. This is for you. You know what to do. Spirit hands you her katana. You look on a whimpering Dwight and feel everyone waiting for you to pull him out of his misery. Okay. Look, I'm manly. We're on a very tight schedule. You expect schedules, right? If you kill me, I'm afraid of what comes next, so I don't know, could you not? Didn't you all, like, want to die? You think back to that strange moment in the lantern room, the Black Lighthouse. When the light hit Dwight, there was something off about it all. As if he wasn't real, or at least not really human. But is that a good reason to do him? Yeah, do him with the spirit's katana? Or is that actually a reason not to kill him? This doesn't make sense. The only thing that makes sense is taking control. Taking it away from them. Taking it into your own hands and coming a new destiny for yourself. Kill this pathetic worm. Kill him and join me on my mission. Together we will be unstoppable. That's quite an offer. What are you going to do? Kill Dwight. You raise Spirit's Katana. And with the ease of slicing a wedding cake, you cut him in two. His dead body slumps on the ground in front of you. That was... so incredibly sexy. Rin places her hands over yours, and you both hold her katana. Your fingers intertwine. Am I, um... Am I a monster now, too, or have I always been one? You look to the other killers and see something new in their faces. Respect. You're one of them now. Ruthless. Uncompromising. Spider of blood. A killer. 
Let's give you like that kind of weird feeling. You know when you've like It's like it's like the feeling when you made friends, right? Like that feeling like mutual mutual respect. Not just mutual respect, like bonding. Yeah, I'm getting like a bonding feeling with these killers. I'm not sure that's a good thing. Yeah, it's whatever. It's a vacation. My father's gonna really crap his pants. At least he's two of us coming. Why are all the seagulls evil? Never mind the seagulls. What are you waiting for, lover? You sit on the beach below the black lighthouse, watching seagulls devour the liver of a dead pirate who was washed up on shore. Just think about how much I love you, Rana. Well, stop thinking. And show me. You think we'll ever leave this place? What do you care? I hope we don't. The end. That's one ending, anyway. Alright, let's go with the spare him option. You drop Spirit's katana to the sand in your feet. Everyone gasps. Look up at Spirit. She's furious. I could never kill him. Manly said, lying through his teeth. I'm kind of curious about these options. We'll come back to that. I never loved you. Ouch! That hurt me. I don't care about you. About your pathetic quest for revenge, about your petty personal drama, or about your cliché existential struggles. Spirit is aghast. You shared so much with her and she opened up to you like no one else in her life. Metaphorically, I mean. Literally, she's full of open wounds. I'm just here for this moment right now. Watch a little blood is left in your cold veins drain from your face. To show you that you're not even close to the ruthless killer you think you are. I don't know about that one, Manly. To show all of you you're nothing. You think just because you have a tragic backstory and a signature weapon that makes you worthy of my pursuit. You're toys to me. I play with you, then toss you away. This whole world is my sandbox. For I am the ultimate killer. I am the next generation of monster. I am the future of suffering. <laughs> what the? I knew I made the right choice of you, Manly. It's the entity. You know, the cosmic being who created all this. You, this island, I mean, even, I assume, it has come to admire your ascension from virtual nobody to heartbreaking villain. You're laying on a little thick, but I suppose you've earned it. Go off. Love. Ah, Pshaw, you've all gone soft. Too much sunshine and volleyball. I don't even like either of those things. Yeah, well, I don't care. That's why you fell for me, I guess. Because nobody cares less than me. Things are going to be a lot more deranged and maniacal now that I'm around. I introduced to you the latest and greatest kill on the island. Me. Manly badass hero. Hey, you out there. I'm talking directly to you now. You think you're in control. You think you're in charge. You think you're in charge, yeah. Well, you are now and never were. This is my game. It goes deeper than you ever imagined. See you around. Forever. Days later. Not much has changed in Murderer's Island. One new resident, sure. The end. What difference does that make? The tropical beach vacation with no end in sight continues on. The water is warm. The drinks are cold and the fire crackles peacefully in the distance. As Spirit reads alone by the pool. I can't believe they pull that crap of me. Me! The one obsessed with revenge. I know that they, I know they know that's my thing. I've said it plenty of times. Kind of the pieces wild here, obsessed with revenge. Those are, these are my most obvious character traits. Forever is a long time. Don't they know that? Don't they know that I'll never give up? Never, ever, ever, ever. Ever! Is there any other options here? This isn't real. Because this isn't real. None of it. It's all lies. Sham, a horrible nightmare. Then I'm not real, and this shouldn't hurt. We got manly, it's time to die. Spirit takes her katana back and turns it on you. Slicing you clean in half. Your blood stains the sand, but only for a moment. The waves quickly wash away along with any other trace of you. Game over. I'm not a killer. Because I'm not a killer, I'm not like you. Trapper's laughter echoes across the beach. I knew it! I knew it this entire time! There's some wuss who bumped their head up in the balcony of some bargain cruise ship or whatever. Fell into the ocean washed up here. I could smell a pour on you the entire time. I'm so disappointed. 
Let's bring back some of the condos. Dwight in herself. He never stood a chance. I admire you, in a way, for standing up for who you are. I also despise you for being a spineless weakling. You're no killer, eh? Even that makes you a survivor. As if you could handle the agony. Here's a little tip. Survivors never really survive. If a warning spirit gives you the ending you asked for, it's a killer be killed world, and you pick your side. The wrong side. The dead side. At least she looks beautiful as she thrusts her katana into your heart. So this time we're doing a, um, I kind of went back and we did the game and we're going to do kind of a, uh, I suppose you'd say fail to romance spirit route. You're ever at the beach to find Claudette and Dwight waiting for you. Now is the time, Manly, to face your destiny. Actually, about that. Manly, can we talk privately? Maybe, um, not here. Maybe someplace else we'd be better for this talk. You know how we feel about schedule, spirit. Very strongly. And you know how I feel about you telling me what to do. Don't do it. Like I said, I rather have this talk with Manly privately. It's not right to do it here in front of everyone. You know, from my experience upper management in my father's mind, I learned that if you're going to fire someone, it's best to do it in public so they don't freak out. Please enough of the fire talk! Wait, you think... No, she couldn't be. It seems so in love. Well, I mean, not really. Spirit is still spirit. But if I tried to imagine spirit in love, I suppose she hasn't attempted the murder to manly yet, so... Okay, fine. Your guess is good as mine, really. That girl's very hard to read. I would have advice, though. If you're going to end it, end it quickly. In my experience, the more pathetic the creature, the more annoying the final howls are. I don't need any advice. Everyone out, except for manly. Does someone say final howls? That's got my whole jam. I could stay, right? Especially you. Out. Lame. Alone with spirit, you feel something awful hack in the air. More awful even than the lingering smell of that cleaver body spray. <laughs> that gag. I'm gagging. We're all gagging for cleaver body spray. Spirit. Rin, I... I don't know what you're planning on saying. But before you say anything, just know that I really, really enjoyed my time with you. Getting to know you over the past few days helped me to get to know myself. For that, I just wanted to say thank you. That's sweet. You're welcome. You know what? It's that kind of thing that shows me you're got, you've got a good heart inside of you. Too good for me to carve out and toss in the ocean. Also too good for me to love. I need someone who shares my interests. Someone I can connect with. Someone jaded, dispassionate. I go off, only driven forward by desire for revenge. I need someone who isn't so warm that I feel cold in comparison. I need someone who... Isn't you. Can we just be friends? I don't know if... Before you finish, I just know if we're not friends, we'll probably become enemies. And I will destroy you. Friends it is! I'm glad to have you here for me when I need you. But it's not too close to me when I don't. So yeah, I'll see you around. Spirit starts to leave. Wait, what? That's it? That's how this ends? You're just leaving me here? I'm not sure I'd use the word ends. And for that matter... I wouldn't say that I'm leaving, but us, we're definitely through. The fact you can't see that, well, it just proves that we never really belong together anyhow. Good night, Manly. What the hell? I just spent all this time on this island doing everything I could get to know you. I'll be told that I should just leave the chocolate factory for the side door. I don't know what that means. Anyway, I said, good night, Manly. See you around. Jeez, I'm sorry. What a bummer. Hey, why did she keep saying she'll see me around? Gosh, I have no idea. And so, my precious killers lived happily ever after, as they should, learning to love themselves first and foremost. I was trapped in a never-ending cycle of torture of my design. Wait, did I just spell my true identity? I mean, this far. You should probably know that. But you have to play again to find out more. Goodbye, Manly. See you again later. And again, and again, and again. Forever. Friend zone ending. So that's it for the Hooked on You Spirit route. Now there are the other routes, and I think there might be some um, bonus. I'm assuming there's like something like linking the routes together a little bit if you like complete them to kind of find out the true story, or at least an Easter egg, I'm assuming. Now I have said if I do another route, it would probably be Huntress. Um, that will probably depend on the reception of this video. 
So if I see like a lot of demand and reception for uh, doing ever run or something like that, then I'll kind of go for and try to complete more of the game. Um, just because it's pretty long, it's like three to four hours for just one route. Yeah, I do have some other like more lengthy uh, kind of games to get to also. But I will kind of evaluate what we got. So I'm not sure if I mentioned during the playthrough, I might or might have not, that this was created by I think the same developers who made the KFC dating sim. And this had some funny parts, but the KFC dating sim was a little more comedic. I mean, the premise is even more kind of zany than this one. This one surprisingly had quite a few serious spots, at least in spirit route anyway. Uh, you are held back slightly by it being an established property and I have to be somewhat work safe. Um, I'm not saying that I need to like have sex scenes to be R18 or anything like that. But there is, um, it's fairly limited as far as like intimate CGs or, or other things. Although if you're a foot person, that, that one spirit scene was probably like, that was, well, you didn't necessarily see feet, although you see feet on spirits like sprite all the time. So I guess it's not a big deal. But that, that scene was really made for the feet people. But overall, from what I've played, I think it's, um, it's actually, it's pretty cute, right? There's a kind of couple sultry scenes, but for the most part, it's, it's leaning much more into the surprisingly cute range. In a, in a kind of like, you know, kind of jokey, Halloween-y, horror, schlocky kind of way anyway. And I think the artistic interpretation they've done with the uh, killers now, I haven't played much Dead by Daylight. I played it back when it first came out, when I think it was just the... Uh, it was pretty just the Trapper and the Wraith, I think, was in the game. Uh, and I played a little bit before it came out at um, some conventions and stuff like that. I met the developers. So outside of that, I don't necessarily really know the lore. I'm, I'm assuming that that's not really a big deal with coming into this. I did make sure to um, see who everyone's based off of. I mean, I had an idea who they were based off already. I've, I've seen most of the killers Dead by Daylight, just from like social media and stuff. And like I said, the art did do a good... Interpretation of them and transform it into more like aesthetically pleasing style, kind of hitting the marks for different kind of demographics of people who might, you know, spirit obviously appeals a certain way, huntress appeals a certain way, trapper appeals to a certain demographic. Rave, I'm sure there's rave fans out there. I suppose if we went down race route, maybe Rave's a very sweet person. Who knows? But yeah, overall, I'd evaluate it as it's a kind of funny, cute side game or spin-off, I suppose you would call it. And I think that's about really uh, the gist of what you would kind of label it as. Anyway, so if you go off watch you play Hooked on You, a Dead by Daylight dating sim, a Spirits route specifically, I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.